from that thing. Welcome back to Dark Skies. I'm sure you were wondering why I was talking and there wasn't sound. Um, because <laughs> I am a silly bitch. Um, yeah, it's episode five, entitled Time in a Bottle. Uh, so yeah, it's the week after last, uh, September 13th, 2077, um, a Monday. Um, the group has already done a lot of discussion, um, to get together. Um, and, uh, we're going to go ahead and just fast track it to that point. 1 PM. Is everybody trying to show up on time? Is anybody trying to get there in a way that might require a roll or some sort of finessing? Uh, I'd say Razor would be like a little bit early standing out probably at the front door waiting okay. on, uh, Letty to show up. Okay. Anybody else have anything that they're wanting to do in the preempt? Assuming I can find parking reasonably, I'm aiming for one o'clock. Yep. Um, so Empathy um, has park a parking garage right next to it. Um, you'll have to cross a street, but you know it's signaled, so no it's not too hard. Um, Mortar, are you just taking a cab? Uh, don't I have my car? Don't I have a car? I don't think you have a car. Okay, I'll take a cab. Oh wait, yeah, you have a beater. That's right. You have um salt. I had a beater. Salt yeah. car. Yeah, that's Such fine. A beater. Parking's present. And buzzer. Um, they, they're paying for my cab, so I would take like uh, whatever the equivalent of like an Uber Plus is. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so um, it would probably be a Delamain, like um, on the low package. Um, but yeah, so you have a robot driving you to um, the event. Wow, this is how the other half work lives. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Um, you don't have any of the special, like, you know, perks. It's not like gonna, you know, defend you if the cap gets shot at or anything. No, no, I'm just enjoying this leather interior. Is there oh, yeah. like, is there like, like champagne in the in the side or something? Um, that is not on offer. Um, There's a room temperature bottle of water rolling along, <laughs> rolling is, between the seats. It does state that that is not included in the package that was afforded you. But if you wish to cred ship up, you can definitely buy alcohol if you like. Looks like the cheapest bottle you'd be able to see um, in the refrigerator uh, unit in the trunk uh, is 50 Eddies. I'll wait till we get there. All right. Um, once you all get there, um, it is a pretty just um, un, uh, ornate security door that leads into um, a effectively a food court, uh, for lack of a better mentality of kind of like how tracking it in your mind. There are a number of different vendors that are just kind of hole in the wall inside of the building, but there are also uh, vendors that have kind of open venue kind of restaurants with seating and the like. Um, you see that there is a tape or uh, uh, a display that kind of maps out the uh, different restaurants that are present. And it seems that the one that you're looking for is um, upstairs on the second floor, um, kind of a uh, corner uh, in the building. Um, and since you said you were waiting um, uh, Razor outside, um, you would actually miss uh, Letty. Because uh, Letty would not be entering through the main entrance. Uh, Letty, you are from Biotechnica. You go up to the 79th floor, um, take an AV taxi uh, Biotechnica over to the WNS uh, building, and they basically put you on their 68th floor, and you descend an elevator down to the second floor. How, how long does Razor wait outside for Letty? Before <laughs> yeah, just wait. Um, like... I would say it's more likely that you would see... Um, uh, someone you know coming that way uh, before you kind of like decide to. Uh, yeah, turn I'd say about. once he sees like Guinea or the Doc, he'll start walking in. Okay. Um, and so yeah, um, Mortar, you um were parking. Um, I'd say the Doc because of the Delamain would probably be the first one at the venue without having to park or anything. Um, so it'd be Buzzard you'd see first. Yeah, everyone would be like, hey, Doc, you here too? Oh, yes, nice to see you again. Uh, shall we go in? Let's. All right. And then I would assume that um, the uh, Nomad and the Solo would probably see each other um, kind of in the same kind of floor parking-wise. Uh, it's probably about a 10th floor like spot, and the first nine floors are filled up with people who work here. 
<laughs> so like you're fighting over those last like three spaces um and we know the nomad got there first and kind of got into position and also did like some swag move to just like zip into that parking space before old man could get it oh he's driving like an old man he's driving real slow <laughs> And I'm assuming <laughs> takes some extra Black long. Friday he, there, he, he turns the car. <laughs> wait, he turns the car around and backs it in. Because of its tactical nature, he has to be no, ready no, no, to very no, no, quickly no, 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 escape. Because I want to make sure it doesn't hit anybody on the way out. Yeah, sure, that's it. As old people will More do. Insurance. <laughs> <laughs> but you two would see each other as you're kind of getting into the elevator, heading down hey. to street level. Hey, kid. Uh, hey, still 48 years old, but hey, how's it going? Like I said, hey, kid. You you would see that, um, and it's something you'd be able to acknowledge, you would see that the uh, Nomad you know as Guinea has definitely increased bulk um, since last you saw him, um, doubly so. Uh, you're a pretty smart cookie yourself. Uh, you would know that he's probably got grafted, and he's also probably got an internal frame based on his stature and it looks like he's still wearing some bandages on a couple of parts of his uh torso Ooh. so it's 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 fresh fresh yeah, I'm, fuck, I'm fucking swole right now R- ripper doc huge. huh using all those eddies uh to make some improvements <laughs> i don't i don't uh i don't suppose you have done anything wild to stay alive this long have you Oh, absolutely. Just just be careful, kid. Don't lose your soul. Cool, cool, kid. Yeah. Uh, you're not here for, like, an Italian restaurant, are you? <laughs> Don't play dumb, kid. You know we're going to the same place. Cool, fuck, cool. <laughs> cool I know, cool. I know, I know. Uh, and he puts his arm around him. He's <laughs> like, walk this way. I got a story to tell you. And he, he yeah. tells him some sort of pointless old story about an old mission as they're walking in. So you had an onion on your belt. <laughs> this fucking asshole just <laughs> ziplines. He just ziplines over to the other building and shoots the shit out of all of them, but dies in a fucking storage shed. What an idiot! <laughs> that one gets me every time. Um, you go into the uh, restaurant. Um, Letty would probably be there well before anybody else. And when you get up to the uh, host, he um, kind of looks. Um, at Buzzard and uh, Razor, who I'm assuming are wearing their typical attire and have. Oh yeah, Psych, Razor's there a coat just... check? What's, what's that? So, if there's a coat check. I'm actually wearing under my like light armor jack jacket. Uh, Psych, I'm wearing. I'm business casual, baby. This is a oh. nice restaurant. Oh, okay. So Buzzard's um, kind of noticed by the uh, host and kind of looks at Razor as if he's just kind of like a staff. And says, uh, hello, um, may I um, take your coat? And also, um, you are here to meet someone, or do you wish to have a table? I apologize, we do not have any um, open availability. And just scanning the area, you would notice that it's pretty empty. But your presumption is is that coming up to, like, 2 p.m., which is, like, second kind of lunch availability, it would probably fill out. Huge. But that's what he asked. He asked, uh, can I take your coat and um, are you here to meet with somebody? Uh, yes, we are here to uh, have lunch at the table uh, with uh, Miss Letty. Okay. Not a problem. Um, Razor, what weapons do you have kind of on your person that are visible? Uh, a sniper and a katana, both. They're both pretty visible. He points at the sniper rifle and the katana and points at the table. Check them in with us, please. Okay, and raise her up, set him down, and as he set his katana, katana down, he'll kiss it, be like, I'll be back, and he set it down. Um, so, Letty, you have a table of choice, so when I kind of move them to you, you can describe it um, as you as you like, whatever um, you'd like. Um, so those two start moving over that way, so feel free to do that. Um, so she... I had imagined she got a... Uh large enough table for them and uh ordered two bottles of wine um just to start it off nice um plus it's lunch um and uh yeah okay she's any um hors d'oeuvres uh 
that would be coming out relatively quick with that order? Like, well, I, I... probably like, I don't know, bread or something. Okay. Bread with oil. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so they arrive. But... I think this is the first time Letty's met Buzzard. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And mortar. Well, so yeah, he'll he'll describe his character when he gets here. We'll start with you first, then uh, Letty. What does your character look like at sitting at the table? Um, so she is a tan brunette Italian woman, beautiful, dressed very um, corporate, all black, hairs pulled back, um, but she looks very relaxed and uh, kind of casual drinking her wine. And buzzer today looks a little different than normal, but um, go ahead and describe. Yeah, he's definitely a bit more. Um, looks like he actually combed his hair today. Um, he's kind of he's balding, has kind of like a white widow's peak, but it's combed back, kind of slick. Um, he's yeah, he's wearing kind of like a, just like a business casual blazer. Um, actually, looks kind of like put together. I kind of knew the reputation of the, the area, but yeah, he's an older gentleman. Crow's feet around his eyes. Um, older than he actually looks older than he actually is just lived a kind of a hard life but um pretty also kind of why pretty thin pretty wiry but definitely has looks pretty capable um he's not wearing his glasses today so you'd notice um one obvious cyber eye and the other one has kind of a interesting contact lens it's um the caduceus cross which pretty obviously makes him kind of stand out as some sort of medic or someone who's kind of been educated in that field and yeah, he would kind of uh, greet uh, Letty. It's a guten tag. Uh, I've heard from my uh, contact that you are very professional, and I look forward to working with you. Uh, may I? And he kind of grabs the bottle of white and like opens it and like goes to pour it in her glass. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes. <laughs> He'll pour one for her and then one for himself. Um, and you, of course, both know Razor. Um, at about this time, as you're kind of getting situated, uh, two rough and tumble looking motherfuckers roll up to, uh, this host. Um, he looks you two over and kind of raises his hand up. You see his other hand kind of like move, uh, behind the, uh, like waiter or the, the host podium. Um, and Mortar, you're not dumb. You know that he's probably got his hand on a, um, trigger switch for the ADUs that you can see. There's about six of them in the hallway and two of them inside of the restaurant. Probably deploy out with auto cannons and just shred you and nomad friend to, to ribbons. Uh, he was saying, no, no need. No need, well, son. Uh, he's, over here. He kind of like gestures his hand and kind of makes you kind of stop and he says, um, yes, um, there is a strict policy regarding um, munitions inside of the establishment. Um, if we can see it, Leave it on the counter. I expect no less of a class joint. He start pulling stuff out of here and out of there, and it's like three or four or five things on the table. Yep. And uh, what he, you can see, he like he did with Razor, hands you a small um, piece of parchment uh, ticket, um, and uh, you would know that um, even though it does look like it's very informal, <clears throat> the ticket, if you were to have been stinged by, your, if anything happens to your weapons, it's an insurance policy for you. Um, so you can actually like bring litigation against them if they were to mess with your stuff. Um, same for you, Nomad. Is there anything you're dropping on the table? Bow or anything crazy? No. Arms, uh, arms out. Guineas completely unarmed. Okay. Wearing a track suit. Cool. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> I assume I assume you're with uh, Letty. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, perfect. I'll make sure you. Um, he gestures over to the corner. Um, she knows you are here, obviously, as <laughs> she's probably looking over in that direction. Um, enjoy your meal. Uh, hey, uh, you, you too. And I go. <laughs> and like I said, it's not terribly packed. There aren't a lot of people present. Um, which again, Letty knows it's one p.m. is right before like the two p.m. lunch like the 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 third shifters because again there are a lot more than three shifts in cyberpunk um and uh that's when they take their lunch so there's kind of missing a large grouping but it's um also a place where a lot of people will be able to take up seating that said you all sit at the table and mortar what do you look like um he looks like a pretty big and imposing solo um 
Does armor jack show through your skin? It's un, it's like how does that well, work? Well, armor jack is worn, so you're wearing like a yeah. So a, he's got medium armor. Okay, he's wearing armor. Um, his clothes are you know kind of pretty pretty standard, not flashy at all. Maybe a little old fashioned, like whatever style is would be like twenty or so years ago. He'd kind of be wearing that. Um, and um, Guinea, if he was looking, would notice that there's a slight dent on his head from the last time. And he would say to... I didn't to, want to say anything. To, to, to Liddy. <laughs> you say to Liddy, uh, you the one that organized this meet? Uh, yes. Uh, hello? Um, <clears throat> our, uh, let's see. Morta? Mm -hmm. Nice this joint. Reminds uh, me of uh, Fazoli Garden back in the day. <laughs> Good. Good one. Well done. Uh, it's just, uh, a little bit better than that. So... Oh. Good, good, good. Uh, please, uh, sit. Um, would you care for some wine? Yeah, sure. And he would pick up a breadstick. And he'd put the first breadstick in his pocket. And then he'd start eating the second breadstick. It's I think Liz. I think Liz froze. Oh, okay. That so, did I freeze? Uh, yeah. He froze for just a moment. You're okay now. He said something. Oh. What did you I say? They're the real Italian breadsticks, like the hard ones, not the soft ones from all of them. Oh. That'll keep better in the pocket. Yeah, it's good for later. So um, who are the, who are these people? I I know so, this one. I know this one. I'm Getty. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Razor, and this <clears throat> is, uh, you said Buzzard, yes? Yes, call me Buzzard. Um, thank you for uh, joining me. I am needing a little bit of shit. Sorry. My controller tried to commit Sudoku. Um, uh, I need a uh, little bit of help. Uh, we have a former associate of uh, mine that has gotten into some trouble. Um, let's see. I'm sorry. Okay. Take your time. I'm looking at the menu. Yeah. I'm the, swiping breadsticks. The waitress comes over and she says... Um, Welcome, um, everyone. Um, have you had enough time to look over the menu? Anything you'd like to drink? Um, we, we do have a couple of bottles of wine on offer already for the table, but just in case some of you are um, maybe against the idea of being drunk this early in the day or late in the day, depending on your perspective, I can bring out something like coffee or a cappuccino. Uh, cold water, please. Of course, cold water. Um, absolutely. Aperol spritz. Spritz? Okay. I believe we have some. Yes. And Look. some some crab cakes, maybe. Yeah, you, you're looking the at drink. the menu. <laughs> you see that on there and you say and crab cakes to drink. Uh, of course, of course. Um looking at Letty, kind of like knowing the circumstance. Okay. Anybody else say anything? Oh, are we doing appetizers? Oh the caprese salad. Oh, um she um Okay, absolutely. And she would kind of like move out uh, to go ahead and fulfill the order as you kind of come back into it. Razor just drinking some wine and eating some breadsticks. The buzzard's taking full advantage of this meal. I've been eating for like food sticks and a lot of pierogies. So <laughs> I gotta come also. Pierogies is good eating. Good eating. I... Pierogi world right next door, yeah. Yeah. And he's on a whole kibble and occasional food bar diet. <laughs> you know, gotta live. Um, it's so, really uh, now. right. <laughs> I boil uh, my own water. <laughs> boil it! Oh no. Um, so uh, they have uh been why can't I read? <laughs> that happens to me a lot. I know all the pressures on me, and I'm failing. Take your time, um, Liz. 
Thanks. Um, so, Eraser, robot eyes, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had a Pretty wild. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whenever we did the fight out in the desert and I couldn't really see, I figured it would be a nice upgrade. Yeah, I probably should have said stuff than what I saw you last time. <laughs> Morty would like a buzzard. Oh, a sawbones, huh? <laughs> the way things went last time, we're definitely going to need one. He loves, yes, uh, well, I'd like to say I might be able to be much more eventful than my last mission, but I feel like that's just uh, tempting fate. Uh, when it's quiet, it's probably nicer for everybody. Elizabeth, if you're not ready, think, we'll, no, we I can keep bullshitting. It. Okay. No, I think I got it. <laughs> so um, they have uh, been... Uh, they have gotten a hold of uh, some experimental drugs. Uh, and they are seemingly distributing it. And that is uh, ruining the image because it is not fully tested. Ab them. <laughs> what kind? <laughs> um, not the kind that uh, you prefer. I don't actually know what it is. You but... don't know that. <laughs> it's like more like pharmaceutical than like party. So, so um, from what you uh, recall, again, not knowing precisely what it would be, something along the lines of um, a. Uh, mixture of like very high grade ibuprofen and antibiotic. Oh, that sounds too helpful. But if or... you would also know that if mixed properly yeah. with certain other things, it can be a lubricant for certain um, dwarfs. What? What? Basically, dwarf? I'm a dwarfs. D o r f dwarf or uh, endorphins. So. Uh uh, if you take, okay. if don't you don't just say dwarfs like we know what the hell you're I talking he said, about. I thought he said Did anybody dwarfs. know what the hell he was talking about? No. Sorry, sorry. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use street slang a bit. I apologize. It, you will slowly gather onto things and start using terminologies like zero or. Uh, oh, I'm fine with I'm, I'm fine with slings, but Chuma <laughs> and the like. I thought you said dwarf, and I was like, yeah. what? Dwarf. Just dropped dwarfs on us, and then I was like, endorphins. So, um, Dwarf lubricant is what we're slinging on the streets these days. And ibuprofen plus God help them. <laughs> antibiotic is kind of a, uh, a, a a drug that's going to get into your system very quickly through specific channels uh, chemically. And if you can lace it with endorphins, those channels will be reached in like a greater capacity than endorphins normally kind of get to. Because in most cases, the body, just on natural, tries to block endorphins there's a resistance to it mm -hmm. so lacing it with other things like experimental ibuprofen antibiotics that are kind of built to get through the bloodstream faster um do so it kind is of... something that uh guinea would want <laughs> it's it's something that by itself guinea wouldn't care about but if this person is doing what biotechnica presumes they're doing with it mm. then yeah definitely I, I, he would probably love that shit we gotta get this off the streets. <laughs> um, and it's for the kids. <laughs> uh, so uh, they, we uh, need to get these off the streets. Get the and uh, see exactly uh, what their contact is. Um, but uh, they. Also, um, looking to Buzzard, uh, apparently has a uh, piece of uh, property installed that uh, she did not give back. So um, we are also needing to retrieve that piece. The property is this something is... that you are interested in? The property is in her body? Yes. Mm. It is... Um, in the uh, neural link. I am... Hmm, I'm no scav, so I understand it's your property and you have right to it, but if possible, we'd like to keep, I'd like to keep her alive for the operation. Don't okay, I was about to ask I don't that. want to get the reputation. Uh, if it is uh, possible, then uh, we can do that. 
if she complies. I'll do what I can to get her to your uh, clinic. Um, and uh, if you accept, I would like to keep this as uh, low profile as possible. So no uh, blowing up buildings. No Hard to do. News. Uh, would uh, it be possible as part of the payout? Um, may I keep a sample of the drug purely for academic reasons? No, <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> That's a whoa. I'm, 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 ask, I'm asking Letty. Okay, no, I, I just, I just want to make sure uh, Elizabeth understands. Yeah. Hell no. <laughs> um, I uh, that decision would be uh, above my pay grade, unfortunately. Fair enough. Or destroying drugs. Destroying them is uh, one way to retrieve Hit them. Kidnapping a rogue corpo. <laughs> Whose reputation is this damaging? It is damaging Biotechnica's. Mm. As well as hurting people on the street. Is um, Mortar a news kind of guy? Does he keep track of the news or is he just doesn't care? Nope. Nope, he does not care. Watches his fucking stories. What about you? <laughs> See, you know, Zach. What about you, Buzzard? Uh, I probably got the radio playing in the clinic, but probably not like a no, you kind. You'd kind of be aware that Biotechnica's um, uh, PR team has been kind of in overdrive this last year. In 2076, it was um, leaked uh, through a Netrunner uh, who was also killed. Um, on the scene, um, that Biotechnica was released uh, had released a drug called um, uh, Securacrin uh, to the public market, and the drug caused people to just kind of like lose bodily function and just eventually kind of like have you know tremors mentally and die. Um, hundreds, if not you know thousands of people kind of suffer these um, negative effects from Securacrin, and they tried to kind of keep it under wraps. Um, and they knew about the um, effects um, and even still released it to market. So you would know that Biotechnica, even though it is kind of like a very large corporation, does have kind of like a small bit of a stain on it because of 2076 um, and the Securacrin issue. Um, and it's probably, the more you think about it, it's it's probably a bad idea to take those drugs anyways. <laughs> Well, that, that's I, I only want I just wanted to with for with consent. It was actually just for like to try to Replicate. look at it under a microscope, and that's why. Yeah, I'm not gonna try to cross like a giant corpo. Like I'm not. Yeah, yeah. You don't get into your forties in this world by being dumb. I just mean it's it's probably got side effects. You're probably not aware of. Is what I was trying to get at. Yeah. Well, especially just based off of the email that I was sent. Um, it's experimental which I assume means that it's not released to the public. Right. It was being moved by the terminated employee to the um, external contact or external asset. Mm -hmm. uh, where is this former employee? Um. I don't know if John made a Oh, there's two a knife across the throat. Well, sorry, sorry, there's two people, and I think it was it, it was it was said, but I think it's been misunderstood by the yeah. yeah. Elizabeth got it right, but everybody else is kind of misapprehending. The person that she is going after isn't an employee; it's an asset. The employee was only kind of tangentially mentioned, and I'm making sure that. No, like, I think I I actually said it wrong. Oh. Yeah, I. I had mentioned a the asset. Right. Okay, I, so the assets. My not... brain told me that we were going after the employee. The employee's but dead. Now that that's, yeah. yeah. I read terminated, and then I like my brain's like, oh, I, they were fired. I should I'm I like, should have hard uh, I should I, I should have put that in a big old bold text. <laughs> no, they no, no, literally that's, killed that's her. Like, <laughs> that's my post migraine brain like being like ah, terminated. Oh, that's too bad. But I they got severance. 14 hours. <laughs> got severed. Great on Saturday. <laughs> no worries. Um, 
But yeah, so we're going after the external asset that has the Biotechnica. Um, neur is it the Neuralink that's? Yeah. Yeah. And she should not have that. Because what I know is that she's not an employee, so she shouldn't have a Biotechnica Neuralink. To be completely honest, um, I, I did the, um, the, the, the age old bad guy trope of not explaining like literally what was being asked for here. They want you to kill the asset. Yeah. Remove the neural link on site, <laughs> return that to corporation and destroy all other biotechnica signs of biotechnica being present on the scene. Sorry. <laughs> that was, gotcha. that, that wasn't exactly put out verbatim, but I was that trying was mostly to mostly what I was gathering. That's what I, was, I, was thinking I was trying to role play it out. Like it was like, you know, corpo speak for these yeah. things. Yeah, I was trying to do the. I do it, and I was whenever I was saying, "Well, we can try you if meant... she complies," and it's like, I don't think she'll comply, but if she does, we could take it out with her alive, and then she can accidentally die later on. Um, I don't know that you remove a neural link. It's a you know, well, yeah, you can probably you can, yeah, okay. Yeah, see, I was confused. I was like, Razor's question to the doc would have been like, if I cut her head off, will it mess with the neural link? Important. Like, Doc's put. Where should I avoid cutting? Yeah, he's putting the baby down. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that would have been my question because I got like I, I mean, I'm really I, like other than the killing part of this story and like the destroying of evidence, I can kind of do that. But like the doc part, I'm. Oh yeah, that's why I might here. mess something up in the killing part. Who knows? So if you um, just pass the information along regarding her, um, Slider's apartment, Slider being the name of the asset, um, is kind of across the water just north of here. Um, you know, um, again, that you have access. Um, and yeah, how you want to proceed beyond that is up to you. At this point, um, the entrees um, are coming out um, and uh, more bottles have been kind of set to the table. A nice place. It's pretty good. More of a Paisano's man myself. If you ordered crab cakes, this is probably the first time in your life you've actually eaten real crab. Oh, it's not even just like crab with a K, like mm -hmm. everywhere here now is? Nope. Stuff comes wow. from Frisco. Mm -hmm. Used to live there. Nice place. Less radiation. <laughs> More sea life. Health <laughs> got problems with flooding. Well. More water, more fish. That's what I always say. Um Is there anything you could tell us about this was it Strider? Slider. Slider. <laughs> like a sandwich. Yes. <laughs> um, I uh, do not know much about her. Um, I suppose that she is uh, slippery, as many uh, on the street are. I'd say that we can uh, make sure that uh, she complies to have her neural link removed, but uh, she, uh, like many on the street, may not. Oh, miss, you're the boss. If, again, you want me to kill somebody, <laughs> I'll do it. That's if like there's a better thing. answer that you think of and you tell me to do that, I'll do that. <laughs> Maybe preferred. Preferred she dies. Okay, I got you. Don't need to worry. Loud <laughs> clear. That's like my second main job. <laughs> <laughs> what is your first? <laughs> Bodyguarding. Hasn't he? Hasn't he been on like your retainer for? Yeah, every minute. Full week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Um. And, uh, as far as pay? Yeah. Do you have, uh, a price? 
same as last time? Just two. What was last time? 2k. I could go for two grand. <laughs> per person? Yeah. Plus cleanup costs? And he points at his head. Uh, if it comes to cleanup costs, then uh, yes. Very good. Looking that you have a med tech on retainer for 2k, so I could just be a part of there. <laughs> yeah, it's fine with me. Okay. So what's what's the plan, Miss Letty? Uh, roll into the place. Obviously not guns blazing. If you want to low profile this. Um. I would uh, prefer that my she not see my face first. Perhaps uh, if she is the one who is. Uh, Selecting these drugs, perhaps someone would uh, be able to confirm. I do have a picture of her. Um, and she would send those to the ones that she already has the agents for. Yep. Um, I guess she would have everyone's agent. Yeah. Right? Okay, so she would slide those over. Um, this is uh, what she looks like, but uh, to confirm. We could, uh, um, have someone. I think uh, I see where you're getting it. Transaction. <laughs> uh, so I... but... go ahead, Andy. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Mortar would 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 point at uh, Razor and Guinea and say, "This one and this one, me." Uh, I don't know if we would be the best people to talk, you know, to uh, be the first point of contact. Uh, uh, if anything, I think Guinea would be because he's it's uh, pretty good at drugs. <laughs> well, well, so but uh, he would then say, he would. I know Steve's not here. Point at Buzzard, who was just asking about drugs, and say, "This one might know." more about that and would be uh, a good first contact buzzard, would not be surprised if he said buzzard his maybe before wares. me might be the better answer to hmm? go knocking yep seems like he knows his way around a drug or two if you're looking for just like a street deal if this is the type of your guy it is uh, not known just how uh how she works at least to me um all i know is that she is uh distributing them on the streets and uh we can go to her apartment and i can access it quite easily you got you got a key to the place do i have a key to the place basically yeah so um if you want me to spiel it? It's uh, Night Corp owns the building. Night Corp being another big corp in the city, specifically yeah. the one that built this city, um, and uh, they own the building. They don't like this specific individual because she is effectively a squatter. Mm, so we're doing two corps a service. Yeah, this is absolutely the greatest mission of all time. <laughs> no, that would be like doing like three or four corps of service. The most cyberpunk mission possible. <laughs> I mean, last mission we did two corps of service. We worked for Violet Technica and helped out Militech. Yeah, that's true. And and tomorrow we might even be able to help the um uh the police. <laughs> oh no! We'll see how it goes. You guys have fun tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kev. Fuck <Fun> twelve. <laughs> That sounds awesome. <laughs> no matting it up. I gotta get out of here. Hey, money's money, man. More than fair. Um, but yeah, um, you'd be able to walk up to the front desk and effectively get a card key that'll let you slip into the apartment at your pleasure. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, after we are done here, we can... Take a trip up north. See if, uh... You want me to drive again, or... Is this if, better separate? If you don't mind. Sure. 
I am not driving everyone home today. <laughs> looks, at, looks at Razor. <laughs> Huge waste of chew. You uh, drove everyone home? Yeah, they uh, forgot their bus passes or something. Oh, you are too kind, Kenny. They, uh, beat me to the car, can you figure? <laughs> you offered me, I don't know. Open the door, there they all were. I offered her. <laughs> I offered her a ride. <laughs> and I had my own. Yep. <laughs> Start the engine and I just look over and there's four other dudes. <laughs> dudes lining up. Hey! <laughs> oh, and, uh... Asterisk. Didn't say a fucking peep, but just in my car. <laughs> You rode the Land Rover today, right, Kenny? Yes. Okay. Well, if you all um, are ready to shuffle on, um, if there are no other questions, um, I assume we'll be getting a uh, buzzer dad back here in a second. Um, but we can shuffle to the uh, vehicle uh, situation. I assume that you'd go acquire the vehicle, pull it along to the front, and then pick up everybody. I'll bring it around front. Yeah. Um Mortar, are you going to ride separate, or do you want to ride with uh, the kid? I'll ride with the kid. He's like 40-something. <laughs> I love that you're 30. 48. Years. Yeah, you're 30 years younger. How old is Mortar? 80. Like 96? No, he's like 80-something, yeah. I'm 23. They got dialysis. Infant. Cyberware. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you don't need you don't need that. You just uh, you just get a pack of diapers every. Oh no! Yep. I smelled something. Uh, <laughs> eighty year olds, let's go. Um, you all get on board the vehicle, um, the Land Rover. Um, some of you have been in before. Some of you have. I think most people have been in one of the um, Bellis uh, vehicles. Um, but yeah, you head across the uh, way. Which, um, by this point, um, it's probably around two-ish, about an hour or so for the meal. Um, and um, it, for those who were curious, who might have, like, you know, peaked the bill or what have you on the data pad that was set before Letty, uh, it was about an $800 tab, um, euro dollar tab. Um, so for some of you, it was kind of the best meal you've had ever. Um, yeah. Just as, a, was going for. just as a pleasantry. Um I was on my I was I was looking up the place before I went. It was like they, they offer genuine fish at market price, <laughs> shipped from San Francisco. I was like, oh hell. <laughs> and you know, I was cool. I only ordered crab cakes and like chicken parmesan and like a good plate of Alfredo. And maybe like a salad. But only water. I didn't drink anything. It was only water. Crossing the canal isn't um, the greatest um, thing to do at this time of day. Um, you're kind of in a bit of uh, a slog traffic-wise. Um, I'd like for just a representative of the team to go ahead and roll me a D10. Steve, do it. He just got back. Cool. Five. Um, yeah, so it's, it's uh, pleasant enough. Uh, nothing crazy happens on the um, the uh, the bridge, and you make your way um, into Watson's uh, south side, uh, just Good on job, the Steve. other side of the water. Um, just to confirm, we did pick our weapons up when we left, right? Of course, of course. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure that it was safe. Sure. Yeah, nothing, nothing untoward happened to them while they were stowed away. Oh, um, before, uh, sorry, before I picked them up, I would have done a quick change into my armor jack and okay. thrown my bow over. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, um, just to catch you up real quick, Steve, meal was great. All the things you said in the uh, thing uh, regarding the sea bass, the uh, tiramisu with an espresso to finish it off, uh, and then dessert drinks, uh, dessert cocktails to finish it off. Um, you, uh, yeah, great meal. And the whole time you're kind of listening to it, you, what you basically caught on and kind of just kept eating understanding that was probably going to be the case is um, Letty wants this person dead and probably isn't going to have time for them to be maneuvered back to a clinic. So it's probably going to be kind of a, not so much a scab job, but a real ripper doc deal where like 
you know, this person's life is forfeit and maybe she'll let you keep the parts. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds fair. And we talked about Buzzard being the point of contact, maybe like the person trying to set up a drug deal just with this, confirm. just to confirm. Since you seem if to be the most to. familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you would <clears> also fine. You'd also know that Letty has the key to this person's apartment. It's more of like a pleasantry than just busting in the door and being like, all right, stick your hands up. So, it's, go ahead. You just want me to be like um, a point of contact, essentially? Like, you want me to like get a sample from Based her or place. something? Like, do a drug deal and just to confirm she has it? Or. Yeah. Confirm she's there. Do a little body count. Once you arrive on the scene, um, parking is pretty street side um, out here. Um, the uh, let me see. Um, the uh, location is. Um, I mean, it's a very tall building, but even despite its uh, height, it actually sits underneath. Um, a larger building. And when I say underneath, I mean the building that is kind of over top of it uh, is somewhere in like the 80 story department. And it actually has like a bridge like structure over top of it, connecting to other different struts that are buildings themselves. Uh, it's very, very massive. Um, and it is kind of just underneath that being like a 50 story building itself, or 30 or 40, I think. It's not terribly big compared to everything around it, but it's pretty big. Um, let me get that picture there. Trying to, anyway. Excuse me for being slow. My internet's just being difficult letting me share. There it goes. Um, but yeah, that building there. Um, and... Uh, you can kind of see the buildings next to it. The one on the right there kind of goes up beyond it, and the buildings to the kind of scope behind also go up and above. Um, so it's kind of saddled neatly inside of that space. Um, you would know that it's also got offices in it for Night Corp, which are the kind of sub uh, connected building. You, you can see there's like that green uh, support structure, and then there's the kind of grayer building connected to that building. Um, these are Night Corp offices. Um, and her um, apartment is on the opposite side of what we're looking at, uh, kind of in the shadow of that office building space and the um, uh, building to the right, north right of that. Um, anywho, you get there, parking's on the street, as I said, kind of s below the street you're kind of looking at there, it kind of goes down a little bit. Um, and uh, the door is pretty common security door, uh, glass paneling. You can kind of see into the front office. Um, you can see the logos of Night Corp, kind of the red uh, normal um, light aesthetic, um, neo-militaristic inside. Um, and uh, yeah, you park and you can enter or engage in whatever shenanigans you'd like to do at this point. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. I'll park as near to the entrance as I can and lock the doors. I don't know this part of town. Yeah, it's Watson. Um, I mean, definitely on street level, it's kind of, um, you can see that are, like, loading areas for, uh, some of the buildings nearby that have, um, uh, graffiti. Um, if you have, um, uh, local Night City, um, just trained at all, any point in it at all, you would know that this is um, kind of Tiger Claw territory. Um, and uh, you'd also notice that there's um, lots of folks just kind of milling about, like they kind of just live out here. Um, number of different vendors near the doors, kind of to the left and to the right, um, all different types of things from, um, I think there was a um, bucket slice um, and uh, like a, a Kiroshi um, install place. 
Um, and there's a drug vendor just outside as well. Check that out later, maybe. Okay. Money's not loaded. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm on the job. <laughs> if you head inside, um, front desk kind of spots you. Uh, you see her kind of look down at her terminal and then kind of look up at Letty and nod her head, kind of like a nod of recognition. Um, and if you approach her, she says, um, the apartment you're looking for is um, 8327. Um, are you interested in going up? If so, she reaches over for a cabinet, pulls out a card and sets it onto the counter. Uh, yes, uh, I'm interested in uh, taking a look. That should give you full access. Enjoy. Um, and um, if you... Um, it, it, it would be beneficial to... Um, well, I'm sure the place is already a mess, so uh, whatever you need to do. Fair enough. Uh, I will try and keep it as uh, clean as possible. Kind of shrugs. Uh, like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just stop by and return the key when you're done. Absolutely. Um, just take the key and start heading up. Okay. You elevator? Make... Yeah, elevator. you take the elevator up. Um, it's, uh, um, <laughs> the numbers aren't hotel style. The apartments are just kind of slotted in, filling out to a certain point. Um, 8327, I believe the number was. It doesn't actually fall on the 83rd floor or anything crazy okay. like that. Um, it's actually on the 27th floor. Um, and, uh, yeah, once you kind of get out into the space, it's very tight, very compact hallway, um, probably about eight foot wide at best. Um, and kind of like eight foot ceiling. Um, the lighting is very limited. Um, it's like every 15 feet, uh, there's a very small light that kind of uh, illuminates the space. But the thing that you notice is that all of the door numbers um, and door lock mechanisms are electronic and have a green kind of uh, emanation to them. Some of them have red emanations from them, but they kind of fill the space with this green and red kind of um, coloration that kind of mutes the uh, white light coming from these limited advantages of above. Um, but yeah, the green ones, you can see the numbers and it looks like, you know, you can see that they are um, occupied. The red ones, you can see that they are um, locked. Some of them have red notices that say rent past due access denied on them. Uh, as if somebody who was renting these spaces has been kind of removed from their uh, con out. Um, but you make it to 8327. Um, Are there any cameras in the hallway? Not that you can see. Um, if you'd like, you can make an awareness um, perception check um, to try and yeah, see if there's something going on there. 14. Sorry, did, uh, did you guys talk about possible resistance or is this just more of a manhunt? I think they're we going don't in. know enough about how she's held hold up. Okay. Do you have electronic any points in electronic security? Um, I that... don't believe so. Is that yeah. technique? Yeah, with that 14, yeah, it's in technique. With that 14, I'm not going to no, give it to you. You uh, don't see any cameras. There's no obvious kind of like, you know, big box with like the arms and such swinging in like any kind of corners or anything. As we're coming out of the uh, elevator, I'm going to stop in the ele elevator doorway and do a little bump of Sith. Okay. Gotta have it. So as everybody kind of steps forward and kind of moves through the space, you're kind of looking around for cameras, do a quick yep. line of simp coke, and uh, kind of follow in behind them. Um, okay. Um, you make it up to the door. Uh, Letty, I'm assuming you're probably not going to be the one who, like, actually opens the door and goes in first. Yeah. Um, who do you want to give the honors to? Who are you passing the key over to? Razor was pretty pretty slick with that fucking katana last time. <laughs> okay. So, do we not want do we not want to try for a for a deal? Well, a preferred time? like marching order would be if um, Buzzard is willing to do the potential um, deal, have him knock. Actually, like and knock. If, yeah, and then if he, she's she doesn't come to the door or is resistant and like shuts the door 
then he can step to the side and then Razor can be right there and then everyone else just file in behind. So just to kind of give you a perspective of cyberpunk versus real life, real life knocking on a door makes sense. I absolutely agree. The doors on uh, cyberpunk apartments are made so that they're buffering sound. So like if a gunfight goes on outside, oh, you're yeah. fine. The but thing is... Doorbell? You would doorbell. It's kind of like a, a ring. It's like the ring thing. Um, mm. The problem is, is this specific one shows the red access denied because this person who's living inside is not actually supposed to be here. Oh. Well, if it won't work, it won't work. Otherwise, I'm going to We're the far side of the door and waiting. Conditions. She doesn't know. I don't know, Brett, do you? My uh, Razor? <laughs> I mean, yeah. We, we you live in an Probably apartment. should just go on in. Because even if she could come out, I feel like she probably wouldn't, knowing that a rent's best too. And, I mean, I don't know many drug dealers personally, but I don't feel like they do drug deals at their own home because you never know what kind of crazy person you're going to meet. You would be surprised. There is a Moodoo. <laughs> but... I'm going to the far side of the door. I'm not getting in line. <laughs> okay. Like, when you ring the bell, does, like, a Chiron pop up, or do they have to, like, come to the door and look through a people? Normally, it would be uh, kind of you press for access on the green panel. It would send a chime into the interior. The uh, mounted camera therein, which, again, uh, was missed by uh, Guinea. Each of these doors has cameras. Uh, would sight you, and they would see you on the other side hollow. And then they would be able to communicate with you or just punch you in. The problem with that here is that this specific door terminal is not green lit for normal use. It's offline. It's in access denied mode because the person who is living here is doing so against the wishes of the people who own the property. What if the landlord was like trying to ring them to get their money? Like it like just doesn't work at all. Uh, they would call them on their phone. How reinforced does the door look? Uh, it looks pretty reinforced, but you have the key. You can literally yeah. just put the key yeah. up to the door. The door will slide open for you. We got the oh, we'll crack this egg. Okay. Yeah, Razor doesn't mind opening the door and going in. So I just want to make sure everybody, it, that sounds like it's kind of leaning towards the plan. Razor and Mortar, you kind of understand just based on walk, gait, the way you keep looking at things, understand yet you're both murderers. Um, so that being said, do you want? So to what I'd like to, what I, before we go in, I just I would just uh, tell Letty to stand behind me, and I would get out my combat shield. Okay. Any other weaponry um, that you pull? Any other weaponry that I pull? Um, yeah, for sure. I guess I would be holding. <clears throat> um. Pulling out the cool piece? Yeah, why not? I'll give it a try. So you recognize that gun, Razor. Uh, that's that Kang Tao Chow that you found on the dead uh, pilot on the uh, crashed craft. Um, the smart gun. And as he kind of places it in his subdermal gripped hand, uh, you can see like the light kind of register. The light in his uh, cyber eye kind of register as he clicks in with the gun. Gotcha. And just so we confirm that Easy access weapons can be drawn without taking an action, right? Correct. So my katana is free to yeah, just draw when I run in. Draw it and cut if you need to, or you should be able to draw the sniper rifle too. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's as long as it's not concealed. Oh, okay, gotcha. Right. Yeah, the, the so sniper is sniper just kind rifle of can't be. Yeah. yeah, it's too big. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Heavy then. pistol, just in case. Okay. Gun out. If no other, uh, if no other rejections, Razor will open the door and get ready to dash in. Buzzard, anything from you as everybody's prepping for murder? It looks like. Uh, you guys know Buzzard's a lover, not a fighter. I never have my my gut, my thing on. Um, You're I'll just prepare. Man, Doc. I just prepare an air hypo. Okay. Just in case. Door slides open. Base inside is kind of uh, dark. Um, with uh, neon lights kind of glowing from small little signage. Looks like there's a Nico, uh, Nicola uh, sign kind of uh, just on the wall. Um, the TV is on. Uh, the sound is kind of just ambient. Um, not really kind of anything, just mostly commercials. It's an all commercials channel. Um, and as you kind of enter into the space, um, you can see that it's 
pretty well lived in. A uh, number of different pieces of uh, articles of clothing on the ground. Um, you know, just um, uh, undergarments and like, you know, pajama clothing, um, a pretty heavy jacket kind of on a uh, uh, couch. Um, and beside that couch, uh, kind of on the left wall as you enter in, TV on the right, uh, you would see that there's a massive hole in the wall. Like someone has just blown out the entirety of the wall. On the other side of that is another conapt, the door, the, the place next door. Um, and you would see that it has a green light. But as you kind of enter into the space and look, you would see that the person, the tenant of the other space, is still there. Um, not alive, Dead, though. I assume, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looks like there is a pretty massive uh, combat knife uh, that has been embedded in their face. It seems to be kind of holding their head up against the wall. And a number of different knives, throwing knives, that appear to have been kind of tossed into the person's chest as if it was done kind of casually. The rest of the space has a bit of blood kind of smattered, like, here and there. Like, there was a struggle. But it definitely looks like the food and everything that's kind of inside of the uh, adjoining apartment, now adjoining apartment, um, has already been kind of looted by the people who are probably living in this space with Slider. Um, you'd also notice... For a pulse. <laughs> that there's a green light kind of flashing over by the kitchen inside of the actual apartment you were going into, not the adjoining. Um, and you would see that it's an old style. This would be something Mortar recognizes more quickly than anyone else, but an old style hollow phone, which is like a landline, but with like a screen that lets you kind of see the person you're talking to. Like this is like 2020s, 2030s tech. Um, and uh, it seems that the green light is flashing as there seems to be a call coming in. Um, I'll answer it. Really? <laughs> you walk over and hit the analog button, kind of depresses underneath your finger, which I'm is... I'm going to go wait at the door. <laughs> strange um and as you do so you can kind of get a nice view of uh the kitchen has like a window that kind of goes out the um, balcony uh, has a kind of stylistically kind of placed uh, almost like a pagoda roof uh style kind of going out from it and you can see that maybe like 20 or so feet out from that uh is the roof of another building the building that was kind of adjoining um and as you kind of click the phone um you see slider and she kind of looks at you and before you say anything kind of presses her hand like this and then places her hand over her ear mortar are you anywhere near her uh near L letty yeah she was behind my shield okay who else is near letty to be able to see the phone call i would be because i'd be like you know walking in the room okay um, Mortar, you're the oldest, so I'm going to give you a lower DV, but everybody who sees the phone call, go ahead and make a uh, language street uh, slang roll. Oh, is that social? It should be under education, I think. Education. Am I making that roll, too? You can. Yeah. Not I don't know about that. Man. Okay. Ten. Surprisingly, uh, Razor and uh, Letty get it. So you would know placing your hand over your ear and kind of leaning in that direction means that you're in danger. Oh. It's kind of a signal, um, like a straight slang signal for, like, you know, muted conversation to let you know that you're in danger. Um, and then um, she uh, kind of jabs her fingers at the screen on the other side, and you can see text appear. Um, kind of in like a modern day hollow style and it says get out and then the call immediately shuts off and when it does the entire room becomes kind of this void of bright light as bright light floods in from the window behind the hollow uh, behind the, the phone immediately as that happens I'm going to ask you what your response is to that happening so um, again you're kind of at the far wall kitchen counter hollow phone window behind you there's the door to get out 
the adjoining apartment space is kind of to the left of you if you're kind of looking at that position. So starting with you, Letty, what would you like to do in response to bright lights? Uh, first of all, I'm getting away from the window, so probably backtracking. Out, do you want to go ever... out to the hall, or do you want to go into the near adjoining conapt, or do you want to stay inside of the apartment at current? Um, I'd rather stay in the apartment. I just want to. She just want to get out of, out of the view of the window at least. Okay, ducking down behind the counter could do could get you out of view. Uh. Is there like a like a corner that she can go around though? Yeah, there's a refrigerator. There's you know space okay, over there on the right. That. Yeah, yeah, she okay. did that. Um, moving to the next person. Um, Order. What? It would be Mortar. Would be the yeah. next person. He was the one following her in. Oh no, I was going off of my the my uh, the table uh, seating. But that's fine. Uh, Let's go ahead with Mortar. Um. He would say to Letty, we should get out, but he sees that she's already bent down, so he's going to pull the shield down over the two of them. Okay. Um, Buzzard? Um, is there enough time to like make it back into the hallway? Yeah, I'm basically just asking where you're moving in the process. <clears throat> if heading out the door is what you want to do, yeah, absolutely. That's fine. You're, yeah, you're we're trying doing to get that. Into the, into the hallway, because I assume if like the doors are secure enough to like protect occupants from a firefight then the walls would be as well maybe i don't mm -hmm. know that's the logic i'm going by so i'm going to try to dive back into the hallway hit the deck razor yeah razor is seeing that lady's protected by the shield is going to just run out of the room to the hallway okay and break the I think uh, we should have run less but break, let's see break the opposite direction that buzzard does kind of watching him move to one side you go to the other side yeah yeah good and then last but not least zach what's uh can you uh, I was already outside, but seeing oh. Buzzard and Razor uh, dive onto the ground, I guess I'm diving on top of Buzzard. Okay. So as you kind of all shift and move very quickly, you hear a spiraling sound, which to Mortar is very familiar. Um, and it would be familiar to Crystal if she were here. Uh, tsunami Arms, Helix, Door Gunner, uh, chambers its first round and starts firing a battery of shotgun slugs through the window and through the apartment smashing through the space very quickly and kind of just ripping everything in the middle to shreds the hollow that you were looking at the old phone um the couch um and a lot of the kind of things kind of hanging on the wall like the nicola sign and the like just get smattered with rounds as this very automatic shotgun uh, just starts throwing 12 gauge ammunition into the space. Uh, this goes on for a good, you know, three seconds to start. If you wish to try and engage this space, you can. You're all moved to positions of cover where there isn't actually any direct fire hitting you. Um, you can hold in your cover, it seems, for a pretty good time um, and not get hit by any rounds. You've moved to positions of cover that it's not shooting at. Where is this turret exactly? It definitely does not look like you can see it, um, unless you okay. peek your head out and try to. Do you wish okay. to give that a shot? I do not. Okay. So after a good... Th man. If, if nobody jumps out and does anything in response, nobody wants I'm gonna to... I'm going to yell into the doorway, are you three alive? <laughs> or are you two alive? Nobody can hear anything over the cyclic. It, it goes for a solid 30 seconds, and immediately after it stops, everything kind of just goes quiet. You can hear, like, little drips of glass kind of falling from the window. Kind of The like, second it's quiet, I'm going to peek. Yeah, the second you peek out, bright light, but you're pretty sure whatever it is is hovering. So your assumption is, is that it's an AV. Um, you then hear a voice that comes over an intercom system um, coming from the AV. Um, and uh, it says... Hi, my name is John Coral, and I have a job which you might be interested in. When you're ready and you clean up your pants, meet me at the Compeki Plaza. I believe you know where that is. If you are interested in better accommodations and considerable financial gain or very interested in sweeping certain things away, be there in three hours. I'll be in the Carter Lounge. Then you hear and you watch the shadow of an AV 
specifically a Manticore, which is a new top-of-the-line Militech AV to start moving up out of sightline. I got AV brand or AV branding, Militech branding on it. Uh, no. So if you want to do a quick perception check to see if there's any branding that you can recognize, you can. Perception is under awareness. Awareness. Oh, very automatic shotgun. That's right, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Tsunami arms, Helix, baby. Yeah. Oh, I wish Crystal was still here. It it, it was a fun time. <laughs> um, what did you get She's on your? In a better place. I got a twenty. Twenty. I got a nineteen. Eighteen. 19. Eighteen. Okay. Um, so there's no branding at whatsoever, other than the just kind of aftermarket materials that would be present on there. Like the, it's kind of like you know, uh, an Impala will have like the Impala logo, and it'll say Toyota. Nothing that marks it as a Militech specific um, uh, vehicle. Um, but that bad boy looks like this. Um, Impala is a Chevrolet. <laughs> for those who aren't familiar with what a Manticore looks like, and the door gunner is where this came from. It wasn't actually the front auto cannons. And he said his name was John Coral. That's right. Like in a coral reef. And he, we can find him at the... Kunpeki. Kunpeki? Kunpeki okay. Plaza. Very fancy, very, very fancy um, hotel that is on the Arasaka waterfront. Letty, what the hell did you get us into? I think we've uh, been hired. <laughs> apparently, uh, something even above my pay grade. Uh, and it was in the car lounge, right? Uh, Carter lounge, yeah. Carter. Okay. All right. Immediately in the aftermath, um, feel free to do what you like. Is that guy nailed to the wall okay? <laughs> I, uh, don't think that he is. Damn it. Is that combat knife still usable? Yeah, so are, the, knife so are the throwing knives, if you want to pick them up. That's yeah, I'll take them. Is there anything of interest in the adjoining apartment? Um, in the adjoining apartment, it uh, looks like the place has been ransacked. Uh, it does look like there was a space where a computer was sitting. Uh, you can kind of see the outline of where it was. It looks like it's been taken, probably sold. Okay. Inside of the apartment that you're in, there was some stuff present, but it looks like it right. mostly has been kind of ripped apart by the tsunami arms. Mm -hmm. So, who did you call? I called no one. Uh, it seems that uh, the slider girl has uh, made either friends or uh, enemies. I am not sure. She did give us a warning. Awful sweet of her. Uh, Considering what the outcome could have been, I agree. You're the boss. Well, what do we do? Uh, if you would still like to join me, I suppose we are going to the Kompeki Plaza in three hours. Ah, oh, just in time for dinner. On you again? <laughs> perhaps me or perhaps him. He said that... Uh, he had a job. I don't know that uh, many people are as giving as I. All right. Uh, well, I'll get my keys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any? Is there anything salvageable inside this apartment? Any kind of information? Um. So you that do could lead to. You do notice that there are the remnants of an older computer, like a laptop, um, for kind of technological aging. I would say the best way to kind of register it is uh, this is very much like a... Um, an old ThinkPad. An old ThinkPad, yeah. That's a very good way of doing it. Yep. Did the victim have any hardware? Uh, it, it looks like it might have. <laughs> but uh, unless you're... Trained... Oh, I think he means the knife guy. Oh, oh, the knife guy. No, um, actually. Uh, you would notice that it looks like that's already been kind of scalpeled out of him. Doesn't look like it was professionally done. So there's some wires and bits that were kind of left over. So probably oh, amateurs. 
can't believe they left such good knives behind. Yeah, surprisingly, a lot of the uh, guy that's kind of left is like plastic shell, um, interlace, kind of just junk that's been kind of left over. So there isn't much of a stink to him. I'll grab the little laptop and uh, offer it to Letty. Broken remnants of it, yeah. I think <laughs> maybe you and yours could use any information off of this. I will uh, see what Nina can do. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's head to the car. <laughs> I do need to turn this uh, key card in, and I will let them know the state of things. Oh, yeah, you're not getting your deposit. I <laughs> glad that I did not have one. <laughs> I'll just paint over this anyway. Uh, yeah, let's leave. <laughs> yeah, she go down. Yeah back down to the lobby and uh, slide the card back over and uh, let them know the the state of things. <laughs> oh, oh, great. Thanks. Um, wonderful. Um, who did you say was responsible? What was the name? Uh, John, Coral. John Coral? The made-up name. She, sa she says, scratching her head, did you uh, get any ID tags on that vehicle? We... Um, Got a couple of shots in it on um, roofbound security, but not enough to do anything. And she kind of quickly fingers her um, internal agent and sends you over the basically broadcast them for you to take the uh, hmm. photographs that she was able to send. Um, Looks like and... it's very, very like just straight off the the line kind of Manticore um, AV attack yeah. AV. Um... That is the one that I saw. I don't think that I got... I would have to... Um, for my micro video, that's... I'd have to actually, like... I've looked at it, yeah. Have, like... I'm okay have... with you saying that you did it. That's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because it, it... Honestly, the, the metrics that they use are... 30 years old. It could be recording whatever you want. You can NVIDIA that shit. You can just say, yep, yeah, I want to pull the last 10 minutes. Like, Okay. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was wondering. Um, I would send that over to her, I guess, to okay. see if she can find the uh, plates or whatever. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put this forward to NCPD. Hopefully we can find something about um, it. It had to have broadcast its uh, movements. Um, just like every other AV in Night City. Um, so hopefully we'll, required. we can figure it out. Um, and yeah, um, thank you for clearing out the space. Uh, really horrible to hear about um, uh, Jared, but uh, I mean, that's life in the big city, I guess. It is true. At least he was on time with his rent. <laughs> he uh, paid several month a year in advance so um not a bad plan on her part i guess true but uh we found him early um regards to his family if he has any yeah um we'll see what we can't find and we'll go ahead and get that carcass moved on over to the uh columbarium um and again um thank you and thanks to uh biotechnica for everything do not mention it I won't. <laughs> Only just now <laughs> as a posture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> the do not mention it is just yeah. formalities um, as well. Um, where is uh, the compagnie? Yeah, I pinged it. It's up here. Oh. We got several pings. Everybody's okay. pinging it. Yeah. Snapping. <laughs> ah, too many pings. As we're walking out, I asked Letty if on her footage she got, like, a good look at the guy. Because, like you said, it was the side, so it was, like, he's standing where the gun was, like, with the side he open. He was standing on the side door? Bloodline. Yeah. Blood you couldn't light. see shit. Oh, so, okay. Now, if you, if you, if you personally, with your micro video, have some other form of, like, vision, you can switch out between that and possibly have seen something. <laughs> Like low light, IR, um, anything else like that. 
in the footage that the the building guy was always all from above? Or did they get any like front on like angled shots that we might be able to look at? So it looked like the doors, the uh, door guns or the the gunner doors had been shut by the time they came into camera view at the camera photos. And it's more kind of a sensor kind of just take a shot, take a shot like a deer, like a deer camera mm -hmm. than like a actual photography camera because not a lot of people are flying through the air. So they don't put like a video camera on the roof. Yeah, it's more um, so just it's hoping we can maybe size this guy up before we see him, because, you know, if he looks like that guy and he points at Mortar, be like, we better go in prepared. <laughs> uh, well, Kompaki, uh, Kompaki Plaza would be the last place you'd want to start a fight, because uh, security is handled by Arasaka. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with, like, Kompaki Plaza in 2077, it's a gruel to fight your way through that space, so... Just a heads up, it's um, not somewhere someone would want to go if they're starting shit. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty uh, solid place to talk. Yeah, that's what I imagine we're going to be doing with a bunch of solos. <laughs> got two solos. Sweet, my two blazer. Two solos, a nomad, and a med tech. My blazer will come in handy again, I'll look professional. There you go. Make uh, me contacts. With that micro video, I don't have micro video, but I have infrared. Would I be able to look at the video with infrared, or does it have to be through micro video? It would have been you recorded would have, in infrared. You would have had to have been looking at it at the time, but since you yeah. do have that vision line, go ahead and throw me an awareness or a perception check. And anybody else who wants to can make a... 17. Oh, okay. Anybody else who wants to can make a, um, uh, a local night city um, or a human perception. Which is under human. S human perception is under social. Social. Wait, what are we making that role for? Human perception. And you where is local night city? Local night city is education. Yep. Education. You'd be local expert. It'd be the very bottom. And that's if you have it. So, Guinea, with your amazing role, I'll let you know that um, my amazing eighteen. <laughs> you talk to people all the time. Uh, who are not well to do, and you talk yeah. to one person who has a specific kind of style of talking, um, that being Letty. Um, if you had to put this guy in one of those two camps, poor people or rich people, uh, it very much sounds like he's well to do. Expensive accent, expensive voice. The guy hanging out of a military helicopter has money. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. But. The thing I'll note for um, Blasted Letty... Blasted a fucking con app to pieces. Not, broad daylight. <laughs> not, not Euro trash. Nothing like that. Definitely a local boy. Night City accent through and through. Sounds like a Californian. People with money. Do I get anything with the 17? Uh, 17 on perception? His, uh, perception. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you would have actually noticed that the guy who was hanging out the uh, vehicle wasn't a corpo guy it was what's known as a door gunner uh have you met reggie yeah yeah we met so imagine reggie but with heavier armor and mounted on a massive tsunami arms helix that's connected to the like the frame of the door <laughs> you saw oh, his he wasn't even carrying it what a pussy no 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 no, no. <laughs> he was he was inside of the manticore talking <laughs> you need a body 11 to just use one of those things. Not if it's mounted. Yeah, and Crystal did. Oh, right, right. Yeah, if you mount that shit, and you can shoot crystal, it. That's crystal right. That's why did. I knew that. Yeah, Crystal shot it with a... She had a linear frame, but it was external. You know, yeah, we didn't have a lot of money. We also didn't have a lot of time. It was a different time back then. It was a different time. <laughs> it was It was 20 years ago. 30, 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Damn. Um. So, anywho. Jeez. A lot can happen in 30 years. Yeah. Like, she died. Uh, Remind me, I killed her So off. are we driving to John Coral's meeting? Is he going to be there for the next three hours, or meet him there in three meet hours? Meet him there in three hours. Um, and we're definitely taking him up on this, this guy that just shot all this to hell? Uh... With the trail on Strider, it's seems to be pretty cold unless i'm missing something she wasn't there and 
No it wasn't there. Alive. She reached out to us by her own, like, home her... phone. Yeah. Uh... Which is now gone. <laughs> yeah, which is now gone. So <laughs> even Nina would I guess that is to a... trace the call. Cold trail. Yeah. Do you want to try uh... and ask Nina to trace the call? Yeah, if... Oh, hey, boss. What's going on? Uh, Nina, I, um... I got a call. Uh, well... Uh, Slider, she called her own home phone, and, uh... I was wondering if you could trace it, by chance? Yeah, um... I suppose I could try. Um, the call was made how long ago? Uh, gives her the time. Yep. And to explain any of the other details of the event? Uh, yeah, she'd tell her about the, um, uh, mana core. Okay, roll 2d10 for me. Ooh. And you've got that laptop. I don't know if she could access it from here. Wasn't that the other guys? Six and three? Um, it was hers. She says... Oh, it was hers? Yeah, it was in her apartment. Oh. There was there was a space where there was a computer in his spot, but it was like the dust, like where a computer was. You know what I mean? Oh. Like somebody had moved it and probably flipped it. Um, this place got cleaned out. She says, uh, "Phone call looks like it was coming from the Glen inside the house." Uh, got an address here and uh, flipped it over to you. Um, you would see that it looks like it is a very old timey um, like. Uh, phone kiosk which aren't very common in most of night city because they've been replaced most people have agents like we're talking the last time you probably see those in movies the last time you saw a phone booth yeah. well it, it, to be honest remember this game was made in the 80s uh right. 2020 was anyway so there were still phone kiosks like if you ever watch like total recall they had them yeah. um but yeah so it's in the Glen, and it's near a spot known as el, Coy uh, el coyote coho which is a uh, large Valentino bar in um, the Glen, South Night City. Mm. Uh, that's where the phone came or phone call came from. It looks like it was a um, uh, effectively a burning call. Um, and then um, I've got a strange signature here regarding uh, NCPD, stating that there was a vehicle that branched off of its routed path. Um, but it does seem that, um, there are no markers or indicators of the vehicle's, um, ownership, which means that it's corporate or government. Mm. I'm taking a look at the pictures here and, um, my initial presumption would be Militech, but I don't think they'd be too interested in meeting at Compeki Plaza if that's what you're yeah. saying is happening. I don't know who this guy is. Um, I can see if um, the director is interested in helping you out with this matter, or do you want to try and play it on your own? Um, she looks at the the guys and uh, the kind of like just a side glance. I uh, I think we may be able to handle it, but uh, I may call you back. <laughs> Okay, let me know. Um, do you want me to let the director know now or keep this under wraps? She might uh, freak out, but she might be interested. It just depends on her mood. You know how it goes. Uh, she seemed in a well enough mood this morning. You can let her know. Okay, I'll keep her posted. Um, and you just let me know what you need, and I'll send it your way if I can. Absolutely. Um, and she'd also... Uh, if she hadn't already, tell her the time um, that they will be there and um, kind of do uh, check-ins. Okay. And more of just like a kind of like a text or like an internal text or a beep or something like that. I'll get a um, I'll get a squad of um, combat drones set up um, just in case mm. if the director okays it. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you again for all you do. If you want, you know that I have a tab open at uh, Vigiano's. That's yeah, fine. No problem. <laughs> Good luck, boss. Click. These people don't like pastries. 
I love them. <laughs> yeah, what? All the <laughs> yeah, she's yelling Napoleon. that after getting off the phone. Like we we like pastries. Well, you would know Nina doesn't like pastries because she's diabetic. Oh, you know, <laughs> like a fruit pastry. <laughs> or just like a little, little shortbread. Well, we got three hours to kill. You guys want to get some cannolis? Do you want to check out that payphone? Or. Because uh, it's probably yeah. about an hour or maybe more to get to the Glen from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we're talking an hour, another yeah. hour and a half to get to. It's also Becky. getting close to the rush hour. Right. Yeah. So double this um, time. It would probably be better to stay on uh, this side. It'll probably take you 45 minutes in your current state to just get to come back here. Yeah. Um... Is the... Let's... Oh, sorry, go ahead. There. Oh, sorry. Let's just go there. I was going to say. On the drive over, is the laptop like beyond like at the point where we need like a tech tech to fix it or could we use basic tech? So a tech tech would be required. And uh, looking at it, you'll note that basic tech, you might be able to get it to work. Like you might be able to get it to power up, uh, but the monitors blast it out. So you would be able to turn it on. It just, you wouldn't be able to see any display. Uh, the other thing you would note too, is, is it appears that as you're kind of looking at it, there are a couple of parts that you're not familiar with, like that are not just laptop stuff, which you would identify as cyber deck, but they're definitely old shit. Um, so you're kind of like, Okay, cool. That would probably require cyber tech. I mean, I'm, I'm not bad at both basic tech and cyber tech. You want to give it a shot? Go ahead and give it a shot. Throw some points of luck on it. I'll, see. I'll help him if that's a thing. Yeah. I know basic tech. Does anybody have a display of some sort? I mean, you can use your agent, I suppose. You could probably plug it into your agent. I have an internal agent, so I guess I can that's plug not it in. That's not true, then, no. <laughs> well, you have interface plugs, right? Yeah, I think so, because yeah. I've got a, like, a, whatever if, the... If, if you want to plug into a uh, sketchy old computer, yeah, for sure, you can do that. Well, it's mostly oh just to God. give... Please don't. How does, know, how like, does uh, helping HDMI work? cable we can... So, um, again, help isn't really a thing. Uh, luck spending is probably the only way you can kind of, like, benefit him the way we're doing it i, I could have sworn there was something like if there's an adjacent a help skill action? role at not necessarily a help action but some benefit you can give if you can't have you just, a complementing can't, skill can't you give him luck yeah that, we know that but... I'm, I'm trying to go okay. beyond that oh beyond just luck i mean you can give let me borrow your agent so i don't have to plug this into my brain Yes, I could do that. Good Microsoft Edge. Yeah, I I I don't know about um assisting. Um kind of looking for anything that might help there. All right, guys. I'm just gonna, find, like, cyber tech's more of a, a side hobby of mine. Um, I'm like pretty good at it, but I'm definitely not like like a tech tech. I'll still give it a try. Okay. I'll, th I'll throw three luck at it. All right. I'll throw two as well. Okay. I'll throw two as well. Plus seven. That's and a lot. One. Yeah. <laughs> Plus eight even. Okay. Shit. And I'll let him use my. Uh, oh, I um, <laughs> call me on Bill Gates. Okay. Nice. Jesus God. So with that, what's a thirty-four? Get it? You're able to actually. Compu computer is very similar to human body. <laughs> you're able to actually kind of get the uh, cyber deck um, to a point where you've kind of realized that the um, the the board is not terribly ruined, um, and you're able to kind of like finagle it um, into a position where like it might kind of offset. And will shut off, but if it's kind of like held down a little bit with a bit of like uh, you know just pressure, uh, it should work. Uh, the deck kind of being put back into its position, um, and then you use interface plugs to connect it to the uh, agent. Um, and as you do so, the agent shuts off entirely, and then just basically functions as a monitor. 
for this computer. Uh, when it boots up, um, it immediately comes to an old meta display. So in Cyber Punk 2077, the computer language isn't really kind of, um, it's not something that's mentioned overtly, but in 2045, the language for computing was meta, which is this kind of uh, synchronization between old um, net architectures um, and uh, a lot of the new kind of data elements. Um, but it's an old style um, uh, net architecture. And you would see that it, there is a password lockout on this, for lack of a better terminology, floor. Uh, you would know that entering into the deck at this point would require interface. Or electronic security. Sounds like Netrunner stuff. It is Netrunner shit for sure, yeah. I have a couple levels in electronic security. You want to try it? You can. Yeah, I'll try it. Is it Nina is your Netrunner on, on standby, right? Mm. I got an 11. I don't think I got it. Okay. So um, Razor kind of moves over and starts kind of using the deck to kind of punch in uh, some commands and then hits enter. Uh, the second he does, you watch as the screen blanks out and just kind of shuts off on the phone. Uh, a spark kind of flares on the phone for a second. You kind of move the board to kind of wiggle it. And you start seeing the screen again, but you know at this point that there's not just something wrong with the board and its positioning. It does look like the attempt seems to have kind of locked out the entire deck. Okay. Kind of like when you go on an iPhone and you like punch in the password too many times. Looks like that's already been attempted a number of times and uh, the lockout's been engaged. Damn. Being so good at cyber tech, uh, Buzzard, you would know that it is a three try system, which means someone besides you has tried twice before he just did what he did. Well, it was it was a good try, and you know it you know killed the killed the car ride. Mm -hmm. That was a good mm -hmm. try. <laughs> This is all going in the back. Uh, going on in the car. Is that right? We're on the back seat. Yeah, so. The three of us. I'm in the middle. <laughs> what, who's sitting up front? Is it Letty or is it Mortar? I I would choose Letty. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so it's Mortar, Buzzard, and Razor in the back. Sure. <laughs> Old Not man. too bad for people who aren't very techy. Crossing his arms, looking at it like having flashbacks. <laughs> well, it's two bench seats, so I could have two people up front. <laughs> I remember these kind of computers. <laughs> I used to play Diablo 10 on them. <laughs> Did you take any breadsticks? I'm all out. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, once you kind of um, uh, brick the uh, cyber deck, um, you continue on to Compaqui Plaza. Um, 45 minutes, um, you get to the um, front entrance. As you kind of pull up to it... Um, Kind of enter into like a, a ballet parking structure kind of out in front uh, beautiful glass doors very ornate looking building um, quite possibly the nicest building in all of night city really um, and uh, yeah once you get there um, and uh, park the car out front you see a gentleman in kind of like a red jacket black slacks um, very um, uh, pristine, corporate looking. Um, his face is completely chrome, um, kind of like a silver chrome. And he's wearing like a little red cap um, with the Compaqui logo kind of in the center. And as he sees the vehicle kind of pull up, he kind of uh, nods at you, um, the driver, Guinea, and kind of holds his hand out as if he's waiting for the keys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I look at Letty real serious. <laughs> As I hand him the keys. Do we uh, pay now or later? I'm sorry, pay? He says. Ah. Your tip. This one, yes. Oh, um, I mean, if you wish to give me any uh, gratuity outside of um, what is considered appropriate, then absolutely you can. But um, my job is simply to take the keys of anyone who drives up and drive your vehicle into the garage. If it is later determined that you're not supposed to be on the premises, your car will be impounded. You can also... You're invited. <laughs> I, I, I would not doubt it um, yeah. for a second. 
Is he judging the car? <laughs> he doesn't seem to be, but he also has like a sardonic or sarcastic. I can't tone. read his face. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's made of metal. It seems to be making facial gestures, like it's it's chrome, right. but it's like you know very mobile, very fluid. Um, but yeah, he um, keeps holding his hand out until you put the keys to the vehicle in his hands. I do it. All right, and everybody unloads. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Gets into like your car, car, starts it up. And drives down the road a bit, going underneath Kopeki Plaza off to the right. Does Gideon look like like worried or scared or anything? Pissed. <laughs> right. He's gonna Just be like patting Gideon on the back. He'd be like, "Yeah, I felt that when I had to give up my katana at that restaurant." Yeah. <laughs> so it's a slight drizzling rain out. Real expensive at katana. <laughs> um, this way, and it's been kind of raining throughout. But as you kind of like. You know, look at the scene. There's not really anybody out and about, kind of hanging outside. Um, do you make your way up to the door? Yes. Okay. Entering in, you see that there are um, detectors um, and security guards outside. Very large individuals who probably rival um, uh, current uh, Guinea in size, if not larger. Um, they look like, um, you know, similarly garbed. Um, one of them looks at you. Um, whoever is moving up first. I suppose I'll lead. Uh, welcome. Are you an expected guest? I, uh, believe so. We are a little early, though. Of course. Take it up with front desk. Gestures past the space. Uh, we'll take you one at a time. You first. Moves you over to the, uh, terminal. Um, as you step through, are you carrying any weaponry? Uh, just the heavy pistol. Alarm clear up. Uh, playing on uh, just very brightly. Uh, he says, please step back. Um, the other back. another guy comes over, opens a very large Militech case. It's empty. Uh, padding inside. Deposit all weaponry. Um, anything that can be considered a weapon. Uh, grenade, bomb, uh, detonation device. Anything that can be misconstrued as such. Uh, she'll put the uh, heavy pistol in there and... Uh, as, you're set, as you're setting the pistol down, uh, the other guy kind of like taps his head and you see his eyes kind of flare red for a second. And then the guy you're talking to, his eyes kind of flare red for a second. And he kind of goes, oh, okay. Noted. Uh, smiles. Um, you're um, with Biotechnica. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Um, well, um, just know that you are in the care of Arasaka as long as you are on Kompeki premises does look like a number of these individuals might have uh, been brought here as security. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, they are with me. They won't be required on the premises. Uh, they will not be allowed to bring any weaponry of their own onto the premises, but they can um, certainly attend you if you wish to have them there for whatever purposes. Uh, I would like them to be with me, yes. Perfectly fine. Gestures uh, to the other and says... Might as well go ahead and make this a bit quicker and easier for it while you're waiting for her to move through. Go ahead and deposit all weaponry into the case. All right, man. Once again, let's try it again. Moves you on through. Nice kind of shiny green as you step through with no weaponry. All right, did next. They, did I need to put the ammo in there too or just the... Yeah, you would have deposited all okay. ammunition as well. Um, Gestures. Next one through. Uh, yeah, Strip off my bow, throw the quiver, and uh, rifle through my jacket pockets for a handful of grenades and pop it in another basket. All right. And you're going in? Yeah. You have no weapons on you. It goes green. And, uh, yeah, you move through without issue. Um, does everybody go through the process? Nobody takes yeah. any weapons, tries to anyway? My no. only question would be, would they consider, like, pharmaceuticals, like some sort of weapon? Like, would they consider poison? The air hypo is not detected as a weapon. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, then I just give them my heavy SMG. Okay. Take my med bag and stuff. Nons. I have no weapons concealed on me. Yeah, you are a weapon. That's fine. <laughs> no, I meant my drugs. Oh, that's fine too. But hey. yeah, once you all pass through, you move up to the front desk. Woman, roamed out, gold, like face and features, uh, same cap, um, you know, more feminine version of the attire that everybody else is wearing and she says hello welcome to Kompeki Plaza um may I assist you do you already have a room for the evening or are you here on uh, guest assignment 
I uh, supposed it would be a guest assignment. Who is your host? Uh, they gave me the name uh, John Coral. All right. She kind of quickly kind of does some things on her computer, um, looking at it. Um, you're at the desk. One other person could be kind of next to Letty. Who would be kind of closest to Letty at this point? Mortar. I'll do it. Oh, Mortar? <laughs> Go ahead and make a perception roll, the two of you. Oh, it's both of us? Mm -hmm. um, just regular perception? Yeah. Okay. What a bad roll. Ugh, horrible. 17. As she's kind of going through the process, you actually look at what she's uh, looking at, um, and you would see a face, a name, which is, uh, it says, um, alias, and then beneath it you see another name, which you kind of recognize um, and kind of shrug at. Um, the name of the individual that has the alias, uh, John Coral, appears to be Harvest Ronaldo. Uh, who you would know is a exec uh, for uh, Network News 54. Oh. So basically a corpo like you, but that works for the news. And that's also the uh, corporation that... Uh cam was connected to right it is it's also a corporation that if they get information regarding biotechnica being uh, loosey-goosey with the rules or having anything that they're gonna sell that they're gonna sell that story they're the ones yeah. who did the um they're the ones who did you wrong in the uh uh secure current story back in yeah. 76 everything is uh making sense now so he will be meeting you um just this way in the lounge um and uh that's absolutely fine Please, um, for some of you more rough and tumble individuals, um, citizens of Night City, please be sure to um, use your indoor voice and um, please don't get to any sorts of destruction um, as it will be taken out of um, Miss Letty's Corporation's funds. Um, perfect. Hey, elbow. Uh, More. Buzzard. Oh, no, buzzard. You hear that? Don't go fucking stuff up. I don't want to hear anything out of you. <laughs> they didn't. They forgot to check these weapons. <laughs> Give them what for. Um, miss, miss these during the gun check? <laughs> Did you, oh, I got you can't see it. Oh, uh, John. Aww. You have city muscles. <laughs> uh, um, you enter into the lounge. Um, you would see the person you would know uh, kind of you don't know him like formally yeah but you're familiar with harvest um and you would see him and he kind of sees you and kind of raises his hand up over at a booth kind of gestures for you to come on over head that way looks like you brought the whole crew um scans detected some interesting individuals kind of looks over at mortar specifically when he says interesting individuals had other plans and apparently you had uh, your own no worries we've got another guest coming just a second here kind of uh taps his ear his eyes bright red for a second yeah bring her on down <laughs> bring her on down that'd be great it's like the like the dating game <laughs> so have a seat yeah um i haven't ordered anything um he points to the center of the table and you see kind of like a, a audio box Basically, it's kind of bright green. Um, he says they are ready to receive whatever order you want to put through, though. Um, it's on me. Uh, you are too kind. Yeah. Push the button. Oh. Crab cakes and... Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this guy goofed. Fettuccine Alfredo. <laughs> Do you already have that? Yeah, Guinea, we already had a tally today. What's, uh, what's Compeki known for? Compeki is known for its... Um, uh, crab cakes. Oh no no no! My brain. Um, hibachi um, and uh, sushi. Um, if you if you wake up early enough, I think they can do. Um, uh, what's the breakfast uh, meal for? Omurice. Yeah, omurice. Um, but pretty much That's whatever. Like an all day meal. Yeah. Well, no no. Are you talking about just Japanese what food in general? It's traditional it, Japanese. It's very breakfast. Japanese food. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm getting a takoyaki as an appetizer. I don't think I get the chef special. 
Perfect. I believe Crab it. cakes and like a uh, katsu pork. <laughs> yeah, I think they've got it. Um, Ooh, warm sake for all my friends. Great. Robin, if you don't have fettuccine. No, he's got, just gonna order for his he's got bright smiles and the whole time he's just kind of focused on Letty as everybody's kind of ordering their food in. And it's called carbo loading and it's awesome. <laughs> once everybody kind of goes silent for a second, he goes, so, um, there she is. And he kind of points and you see two uh, security individuals uh, walking up to the uh, table with um, Slider in tow. Mm. She's alive. <laughs> She's alive. They does see she look hurt? She doesn't. They set her down, but they do seem to be forcing her to sit. It doesn't look like she's here willingly. And she sits, kind of annoyed, looking over at Letty. Didn't run far enough. Hey, hey, John says. Hold on a second. We haven't even gotten the pleasantries out of the way. So, Slider, you know Letty, and Letty, you know Slider. Great. I'm sure uh, that'll go over very well. Um, based on what I've been able to suss out, you're planning on putting her down. Is that right? It was uh, in the cards. Cool. I love that for you. It's a uh, very um, clandestine, totally not a part of any kind of cover-ups or anything that we would be interested in over at uh, Dockside. Um, <laughs> right? Is that uh, accurate? You uh, love your news. Oh, we sure do. Um, but I'm really not just here about you, you know. I, these wonderful folks all have their own little stories going on as well. Did you oh. know that Buzzard's Ripper Dock shop? Gesturing towards Buzzard, using his handle, having just met you for the first time, um, was the location of a very large city-wide chase that caused a lot of damage to property along the way? Maybe about two day or two two weeks ago. I have uh, just met him. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And uh, gestured towards um, Guinea. This fellow here was a part of that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh no no no! Sorry, not that one. The other one. The Fucking other liar. The other. <laughs> the other citywide chase. Fake news. Right. Weren't you a part of something like no. that? Or were you the guy at the bar? I've been to a bar, sure. You were the guy. Are you at talking the... about that arson I stopped? You were the guy at the bar, gestures towards mortar. But your story goes even deeper. Gosh, man, I pulled a lot of stuff on you. He also stopped at arson. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's. Are we broad? Are we live? <laughs> that's great. You see her kind of um, as it, he's kind of going through everybody, trying to sound cool. She says, "Will you get the fuck on with it?" I'm really, yeah, really. bored. You're, you're boring us, Mr. Tabloid News. He says, okay, <laughs> okay, fine. I just want to come to terms to make sure you folks understand what I'm trying to kind of push here forward. So, Yeah, you're a dick. We get you, it. You've, you've met my associate, buddy, uh, Cam, right? Yeah, he's a fun guy, Boris. He uh, sent out some really uh, interesting footage. Um, a couple of you were blocked you were there though um but uh, some very interesting footage to be sure uh regarding uh militech operations city side not supposed to be happening and that's fine i don't care if biotechnica was involved or not again i'm not here to finger a biotechnica we've already done enough damage to your image as it is and we're not here for that we know we can definitely push some buttons if we want and um, the secure crim wasn't all the information we got from that leak from that poor little girl you murdered that night back in 76. So the main point I'm trying to get to is that it's really interesting that you have so much information regarding contacts with Militech. I want them. I want your contact. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to in Militech, your department? You pass that over to me, and you walk out of here with everything you want. You walk Why out. Why with... do you need the contact? Well, I really wasn't interested in telling you what I was going to do with it or what I wanted to do with it, but um, it's the only piece of the puzzle I need 
to cause Militech some issues. And I'd really, really, really like to do that. So you can come to your decision and I will be able to, you know, once you give me the name and the information, be able to source that and make sure you're not lying to me or anything. Because it'll fit so neatly that I shouldn't need to verify too hard. If you get my meaning. And if you give me that, you and your friends can walk out of here after a nice meal, some drinks, and you can take her with you. In fact, if you'd like, looks over to one of the guards that kind of walked over with her. Arasaka, uh, heavy armor, like definitely looks like, you know, a super goon. Um, says, I can have you leave with her alive or dead. Your choice. I can take her out right now. She looks at you kind of like, he wants information from you, and I know you want information from me, so don't body me, she says. He says, your choice, though. How in the shit are we? How how many, like, security Wait. guards oh, in, have us surrounded? In vision? Just in, few, in view. Two. I, I'm aware that there's a full-on network. Two. Um, but you would also... Mortar would also note that there are three ADUs in this restaurant alone, which are deployable defense turret systems, um, defense units. Um, there's definitely a couple of um, Arasaka-styled um, combat drones, which are very large, uh, like Ed 209-like devices um, with pretty massive machine weaponry um, on them. Um, it's a very bad place to start a fight. Yeah. Um, but you're welcome to she... try. <laughs> oh, God. It's like the last thing we want to do. Um, she I'm watching back Letty. <laughs> and uh, in her internal agent, she just kind of uh, send a ping to uh, Nina and say uh, they want... Uh, the contact for M and meaning Militech. Yeah. She would reply, um, director's out. Big meeting. I can't ask her for permission. It's up to you. Um, if you want my opinion, I'd say go for it. Our security's personal anyways. Um, mm. And they're not going to be able to finger it on us, so they were pretty sloppy in their pickup. And by pickup, she means the corpse. Milk. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, she'd look at uh, him again and uh, say, um, "So I." I give you this contact mm -hmm. and no news for Biotechnica. Biotechnica free and clear. Just and you get to take her gestures towards uh, Slider wherever you want. If you want us to kill her for you, we can. Right here. Well, right outside, obviously. Don't want to get anything on the um, lavish interior. Um, and wouldn't want to make a mess in here. Exactly. As, as I'm like putting a napkin over some barbecue sauce from the appetite. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking embarrassing. Yeah, they, they'll bring you anything that you order, by the way. It doesn't seem to be an issue. Um, drinks are probably being laid out right now if you ordered any. Um, and he says, and that's that. That's all we need. And um, if you want, I can also make the deal a little bit sweeter. Uh, looks directly at Mortar. I can give you a bit of information that might um, be important to you. But I'm just going to leave it. He says, I'm just going to leave it there, nice and vague, the way you like it. He smiles and says, don't go blank or anything. Oh. <laughs> um. All right. 
I um just between you and me. Um she tell him the uh contact which was Jez's mother. Mm -hmm. Second you say it, he uh kind of taps his ear and you can feel a uh, kind of sensory connection with him on your uh internal and he says send it through and you can only hear him through your uh agent not him speaking mm. do you send him the details that you have yeah okay he smiles as his eyes kind of glow red for a second awesome so she's yours do you want us to uh back her up for you or He'll be leaving with us. Did you want to... Or shall the gentleman? Oh, um, yeah, if you want, um, you can go ahead and head on out. Um, or if you, you can... Go ahead. Uh, Letty, if you, uh, if you don't want her wriggling wherever you want to take her, we can KO her and put her... I have a cryo bag we can carry her in. Until we're ready to... I don't to, think uh... she's going to run. <laughs> she looks at Letty and she says, If you don't harm me, I will play ball. Do you give more information on the... Um... She raises her hand up, and you can see that uh, John's kind of leaning in as you're talking. And, uh, yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> and then you see John kind of smiling. Kind of like real John's kind of smiling. Okay. <laughs> I'll go I'll go have a seat next to Slider. Yeah, she looks over at you. sort of whisper to her right now. What is Biotechnica? Yeah. yeah. Right now, Biotechnica is the Mother, Father, and the Holy Ghost. Just sit still. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Um, he says, well, if you'd like, um, Mr. Mortar, um, since these folks are enjoying their food, you don't look like you're eating much. Would nope. you like to take a stroll with me? Have a nice little chat? It looks at Letty. I'm on the clock. If uh, you would like to take uh, 15? That should be more than enough. Walks with you okay. out outside. It's just you and him standing out in the rain. Um, and there's like a small little bar across the way. You can see a couple people in there kind of, you know, vaguely pressed. As he kind of comes out, you see him press his ear. And uh, you kind of hear this droning sound. Kind of emanate from him. He looks at you, all nice and okay, quiet. Okay, so like noise suppression. He's like all nice and quiet, smiling at you. Mm -hmm. Quite a show you've put on. I've seen a lot of yours. <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to let you know. Um, some eyes caught wind of your foray over at Seventh Hell, specifically the contact that I just got the information from. Sent a video of you getting shot in the face um, on site. Looked like a pretty good job. Probably, yeah, made, a rubs, rubs his head. <laughs> probably made a decent amount of eddies. But I will let you know that Militech does have those deeds. And if they slip wrong, it could be a problem for you. So what are you saying? That's not the largest part of it. It's not something I'm going to be able to deal with much other than I'm going to get rid of the person who initially had that information um she, that works the major is going to have some problems in the next couple of days that um their pr team will not be able to match i'm sure but i did want to make sure that you were aware um two individuals i know currently under militech employ that could cause you some problems down the line your I don't know if you worked too many jobs together, but the individual that you might have known as Striga. Out of Look, character, which one was that? Chad's character. Oh. <laughs> he, he's a nomad? Uh, no, 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 no. Chad's character in... His old character. Dark uh, Chad. Uh, yeah. He was a uh, solo. Striga was a... They were a solo. Um, okay. Who was also kind of like team up with you several times. It was like in a couple of the one shots that we did for okay. Patreon. Um, okay. Striga is kind of their bogeyman uh, individual that um, 
they put a lot of money into to make a pretty damn fine killer. Mm -hmm. And if my records in what I've been able to scan are correct, they have another contact who goes by a very, very familiar handle, uh, Black Megan. <laughs> uh, sigh. Wait, that's that's impossible. He still, he says. No, I agree. We were actually on site, uh, camera wise. Um, we had an AV about three hundred feet up above your little foray back in um, sixty six. So his like his like uh kind of stoic facade falls away because he honestly thought that he took all this damage and pain but she was gone the idea that she would be back would be just really hard all we have is a handle no movement or anything going on uh just a contact and we don't have anything foundational but you um you're kind of a ghost story in uh n54 yourself mortar been running around since Saka building got nuked the first time i have my share of stories yeah more than fair i lived more than one life uh -huh. and i'd like to keep it that way i don't want to out you or have you caught, have any problems looks like you're in your retirement years just doing odd gigs to keep the food rolling in mm -hmm. so what do you want me to do for you then oh nothing kindness Treat my boy Cam good. Make sure he gets some good shots. You murder and some cyber psychos or some shit. I don't know. Keep working for Letty. She seems like good people. Not too many of those in Biotechnica, as I'm sure you're aware. Her boss is a real fucking shit stain. Um, but, uh, yeah. Just keep handling your business, Mortar. And um, if anything pops up about this uh, handle, this uh, other ghost... I'll send it your way. Thank you. Reaches out to give you a handshake. You would shake hands for sure. Fucking legend. He smiles <laughs> as he takes the handshake. I figured it would be gruff like that. <laughs> and then he says, well, enjoy the rest of your uh, meal. Probably a little bit more easier to eat without it being a little less tense. I'm going to go get a drink. And he uh, wanders over to the bar outside. Um, you can hear the... Uh, audio shifter kind of move away as he kind of steps aside. Nice. Rain, oh. rain drizzling down. Kind of take that moment. Pulls out a cigarette. Yep. <laughs> takes it. Takes it. Takes the smoke. Sort of looks down at the ground while he's doing it. I would assume if this was a movie and we had the licensing, uh, we would pay for um, if I could put time in a bottle just to be playing right now. <laughs> that's moment. right. That's right. And then he slowly walks back to the group. All right. You guys are getting good food. Um, and, uh, yeah, at any point you can leave um, with um, her. She um, doesn't eat and just is very quiet and very tense. Uh, but when she come, when you come back in by yourself and he's not there, she says, where'd he go? He seems to have lost interest. What's on Guinea's plate? A lot of shit. Uh, <laughs> there was like there was like a katsu pork bowl and some ramen. He would reach in and grab a piece of pork and sit down and says, "I like that okay. guy. He's not he's not half bad." You could have ordered, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed like a dick to me. <laughs> I got to stay in character, Zach. Yeah, you know? you're an asshole. I get it. <laughs> Use your elder. Let him eat off your plate. Fuck no! You name one elder that you let do this. You know his teeth aren't so good. Chew it for him. Spit it down his mouth. I will. I Next bite's on me, champ. <laughs> I let my mom eat off my plate. Uh, okay, yeah, he's not my mom. <laughs> you didn't birth me. <laughs> I'm fucking far from it. He puts his hand on Guinea's shoulder. You're like the son I wish I never had. Yeah, I wish so. <laughs> I wish it so. If you so, so you've got Slider there to talk to, but you know that this place is definitely probably bugged to fuck, um, based on what John just did outside. Um, yeah, if, if security's more or less fucking off, not paying attention to us as much, they're, they're kind of like sure they're keeping an eye on us. They're not keeping an eye on you. They're keeping an eye on her. Right. 
But uh, if that's the case, I'm going to walk her back out towards uh, the parking lot if everyone else is more well, or less finished with their meals. If you try to make your way to the parking lot, security would kind of stop you at the where, elevator. They drop the car off. And they tell you to go to the valet. And yeah, right. if you kind of step outside, um, it's raining a bit heavier now at this point. And uh, once outside, she kind of looks at you like alone. Um, she's going to kill me, right? Or have one of you folks do it? Um, uh, that Buzz- way. Buzzard's, Can't promise he's nothing. <laughs> sipping on a matka bubble tea that he got to go. Mm-hmm. He says, my dear, I am, one way or another, you and I have a date with the operating table. Is that so? She smiles. Okay. Um, I'm assuming she wants the link back. You got some shit that Biotechnica wants. They're probably real mad about the fact that they can't just shut it off. I would guess. I don't know about that stuff. I had one plugged in for a little while back in the early days, and I couldn't walk in front of a microwave without pissing my pants, so I don't know any better. Uh, yeah, they want it out. <laughs> the Land Rover pulls up, <laughs> the, va- the valet in it. He pops out. Um, the car's still running, because the expectation is that you leave immediately. <laughs> and then he walks over out to you guys and kind of is holding his hand out just idly nearby everybody. Uh, specifically the Gideon valley. Buzzard. Yeah, he's he's accept, he's expecting a tip, but you don't have to give him one. You I'll give him one. 20. Alright. Okay. He kind of looks at it, kind of puts it in his pocket. Uh, after looking at the Land Rover again, kind of like, you know, duh, what did I expect? <laughs> kind of wanders off. Yeah. Uh... Alright. 20 is a real good tip, bud. <laughs> Have fun Not running here. in the rain. <laughs> uh, Letty would drop off. Um, an From me, it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you if you come out and see that the valet is kind of walking back, you walk over, hand him 100, and uh, this seems more appropriate. You all enter into the Land Rover with um, her. Now, seating-wise, uh, there is a position for someone to sit up front as well. So you could put Letty... Um, and someone else up there, um, and then you could put three in the back, or you can have since she's kind of smaller frame, you can just four force it in the back. I can make sure I pick up my solos. weapons. Yeah. Her. So they when you exit out, they open up the case, and you just kind of collect your shit. Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha. Put uh, her between razor and mortar in the back. Me, you, and the dock up front. I'll still I'll, I'll sit in the middle. Yeah. Start the car and start moving. Once you get moving, I mean, she's quiet. She's not proffering anything forward. Her arms are crossed, and she's kind of occasionally looking at the two that are back there with her. Like, uh, Mortar, you know she's sizing you up. Like, it, it, she's not a solo. She doesn't look like a solo, but she's definitely squaring off in her mind. You've seen it a hundred times before. People the think that. Zip- I see her in the rear view. <laughs> As a riding uh, racer, is gonna be like, how could you just leave a good combat knife behind? Like, was it mine? <laughs> Whoever it was, just no weapon etiquette. Yeah, I don't disagree. They were real shit bucks. So it was uh, not you who blew a hole in the wall. Oh no! Yeah, definitely beyond my capabilities, ma'am. <laughs> Fair enough. But um. I guess I'm the one that's going to take the fall. So that's Un- cool. Unfortunately, you did not pay your rent. And uh, you know how corporates are. Yeah, it wasn't my name. So how did you get the uh, contact with Biotechnica? I'm guessing Toby's out of the picture, right? Yes, he's... Uh... What did the email say? Terminated? Yeah. That's usually how you fucks work. Well, I'm going to ask you one question straightforward, and if you uh, lie to me, I'm going to know. Because I'm pretty smart about this kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Your doc said he's already going to be cutting me up for whatever you think is yours. That's fine. I get that. That's a vibe. But, um,. I'm going to ask you a simple question. You're going to answer it. And I'm going to know if you're lying. 
if I comply, am I walking out of here alive? Or I'm leaving this place, or I'm leaving Night City in a body bag. Which is it? Well, I would uh, prefer that you leave Night City either way, personally. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not going to happen unless I'm going to be dead, ma'am. So uh, I'm going to make sure we don't politicize the question too much again. You folks going to, your, your old timer here going to be putting one in my head or what? I'm not giving you any promises. I'm just asking you what your plan is, despite what I'm saying, because I know nothing I'm saying is going to change what's in your head already, ma'am. I know how you the corpus. corporation would rather you be dead. Yes. Great. Well, if you're not, I... hmm? if you're not willing to change that, and that's what we're doing, go ahead and get it done. I don't give a fuck. If you want me to start a kerfuffle, I'll do it. Make it nice and sweet for you so you can claim you were the victim. But uh, we both know the truth. You're a piece of shit. And these hired fucking stooges of yours can go and suck their mother's cocks. I don't give a fuck. When she talks about the mom rage, she's going to stab her in the throat. Okay. Go ahead. The goddamn car, you fucker! God damn it! <laughs> You don't have plastic on back there just for this what occasion? What the fuck is wrong with all of you? Go ahead and make I'm a, just sitting here. Make a melee weapons attack, bro. I'm thinking about my stories. I'm choking on tapioca. <laughs> 18? Go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> and you said you were going for the head, so that's definitely going to work. She's not evading. Okay, what's the, the damage roll for the... Uh, it's a um, knife? Yeah, it's the combat knife. Uh, 1d6. I just had this Three damage. So armor sick. polished. Okay. Uh, yeah, you stab her in the neck. Um, she takes the shot. It doesn't go through the middle. It kind of cuts to the side. Um, and as you kind of like press the blade into like the side of the neck, you realize that she's kind of looking you dead in your eyes, and she's smiling. She's not dying. You definitely have her bleeding a bit, um, but she is smiling in your face. Do you continue stabbing her, or what do I make of that? Do I make? Uh, do, have I seen this kind of you thing? You're making it. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's cold as fucking hell, dude. She is literally just she's owning the situation. She's in control. She's dying. She wants to die because she knows she's got something up her sleeve that's not going to be deposited here. This is good for her. Okay. So, does anybody respond to Razor stabbing her in the neck? I just think... Uh, yeah, <laughs> what the fuck? Gross. <laughs> Do you pull over? If I see an alley, sure. Yeah, not so much. You'd be able to kind of pull off the side of the road. Um, nah, fuck it. It won't be an We're alley, driving. it'll just be kind of like a space near like a bunch of buildings. Pretty, worth it. It's pretty quiet out here at the Arasaka waterfront, by the way. Not a lot of people drive out this way in the middle of the night. I throw gauze into the back seat and say, cut that shit out. Put pressure on it. Letty didn't say killer yet. Ruiz will pull his knife, pull the knife back out. I'm like, I don't like people talking about my mom. And then he'll put the gauze up to her neck. Professionals. She's bleeding in my car. <laughs> she looks at you and she puts her hand up to her neck and kind of presses it over the gauze, holding it down herself, looking at Razor. And she's actually looking at you, like, strangely sexually. Like, she's looking at you like... Oh, fuck, she's into that shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, she's definitely into that kind of shit. Razor, a wink back. She turns and looks over at uh, Mortar. What? Your mom long since fucking dead? You're not that upset about it? That's too bad. I'm pretty sure you would have done it in one. Hey, um... I saw you smoking out there with that fucking stooge. Spot me, man. She says, I saw you smoking out there with that fucking stooge. Spot me, no, man. I, I, I heard a spot you one. Yeah. Sure. I'll give her, give her a cigarette. You're a real fucking doll. She's <laughs> light it up for her. Yeah. It, it, as she's like about to go for her own tool hand and flip her thumb back to light, you light hers. She goes, oh, okay. Thanks. Jim. So it's going to be, big boss lady. One guy's just virgin on it. Wants to do it because he's got a mommy complex. 
The other one's chill as fuck. I haven't seen an ice cold rider like this in a while. Pretty cool shit. You killing me? I'm driving under the assumption we're heading towards buzzards. Oh, it's going to be a while yeah, on that. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't given any direction. Otherwise, I'm just occasionally glancing in the rear view while I drive. Actually, it's not too bad. Um, the Arasaka, you get right onto um, the main thoroughfare um, and make yeah. sure you can zip right on down. It's not going to be too bad at all. Well, it's, it's, it's still a drive. There's still like a narrative beat going on that oh, we're yeah, driving yeah. with this For uncomfortable sure. silence that is yeah. just a, uncomfortable lasagna back there with the sexual <laughs> tension now. <laughs> Um, I get it because layers. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> people, people act funny in these situations. Oh yeah, uh, indeed. Uh, uh, Mortar would say, she says, like sympathetically. She says, "Thanks for noticing." <laughs> Thanks I for the would, uh, Rather you not die in uh, Guinea's car. Well, good thing for you. This guy hits like a bitch. Second, <laughs> not that part. Oh, <laughs> I meant the guy in Getty's car, not the. <laughs> I honestly do not blame him for uh, defending his mother, though. She uh. Defend my own as well. She goes, "Oh yeah, great," and then kind of takes a like a long drag, like while just staring at Razor, like eye to eye, blood just kind of dripping along her like gauze and her palm and wrist, and then she just breathes it into your face. Ah, oh, it's too bad. She said, no, don't kill him in the car. Kill her in the car. Too bad. Okay, where are we going? Doc's office? But, um, too bad. You're never gonna find the... You're never gonna find the material. Pretty sure that's part of your job, isn't it? Stupid bitch. It is. Yeah. Toby told me that'd probably be the case. <laughs> Only I, way I was walking is if I played ball. I uh, assume that you have it well hidden? <laughs> no. Fuck that. It's long since left my hands. Because unfortunately, colder motherfuckers than this guy right here came along and made a home of my apartment. Locals? I'm not telling you shit. Oh, they Western blasted Canada. in through the next... Okay, she didn't go through the wall into the neighbor's apartment. They came through the neighbor's into her house. We technically didn't have time to look at that. And didn't ask questions didn't. about it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't something you would have thought of. And obviously it wasn't something you thought of. But she says, um, I'm not telling you shit on who they are. That's fucking giving the game away. And she kind of like pulls the gauze back, kind of looking at it. And kind of like just tosses it on the floor. Looks like the bleeding has kind of stopped a bit. You can still see a bit of the meat, uh, but like it's not like terribly bleeding out or anything. Hmm. And I assume that you wouldn't even tell us if you're gonna kill me, lady. I don't give a shit what you want. And I will wait all night for our mommy prince boy dearest here to stab me to death. I'll enjoy most of it, she says, just staring at him again. If you want the neural link, I'll be happy to let you have it. That's fine. But I will tell you it's compromised. And it's kind of pointless for you to take it back. Understandable. Um, well, if you are not giving us the information, even if we let you live... No, 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 see, that's not what we've discussed. Is that on the table? You said, Corpos want me dead. Corpos want me dead. Corpos get me dead, because I'm currently in the hands of a fucking Corpo. Are you letting me walk? You said you gotta leave Night City. I said that shit's not happening. We're negotiating. You've been here before. Come on. They taught you this in your prep school, I'm sure. Yeah, I've got a wild idea. <laughs> 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 Maybe we all take a nice, friendly drive to the doc's office. He scoops that shit out of your brain. Not gonna And when it. you're alive afterward. And she knows why she doesn't want it back. 
I don't follow. <laughs> so it's compromised is what you said, which is specific exact terminology. I think you can kind of come to terms with what that means and fill in the blanks. So I don't have to say it out loud to everybody else. They wouldn't have a clue. Basically, it's useless. More, more, more that it's actually harmful to take it yeah. back. Well, yeah. Um, why would she still have it in her? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. No, 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 hold on. Idea. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to explain it to you on a roll. Go ahead and make a business roll. Where did I put my sheet? I popped it out. <laughs> Fifteen. 15. <laughs> Difficulty value is thirteen. She has been in whose hands for all day, or for at least three hours, because she was probably picked up very shortly after the call. Oh, fifty-four. The news. Yeah, which means that if you take it, it's evidence, and they can use that to blast you further. True. She says it's compromised, which mm. has to mean corporate entanglements. Yeah. Well. Oh. Which means... You taking it and it being destroyed are two separate things. Yeah. I should have could... said in my pirate voice. <laughs> Arr. Come to ghost. Arr. Yeah. Um, I guess... Take it out and destroy it, though, so... You know, you could just kill me. We already discussed that. I mean, he can't. This guy can't. Just, just, just to murder. <laughs> he can give it a go. Well, we're addressing terms as they come. We're eliminating bleeding and stabbing in the backseat of my car. I, I, will, uh, I will say, not letting you take the hot potato with you is probably a good bargaining chip on my end for the getting to live part. Clever. She smiles and looks at um, uh, Mortar, kind of passes the butt to you for you to toss out the window. Yeah, sure. <laughs> California's on fire. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's raining that day. There's no vegetation. Yeah, there's no wood. Like, people have, like, <laughs> barcodes or something that identify who they are. Could we, like, give this girl a new face or something and then, like, let her loose and people, and they wouldn't know that she's still alive? Honestly, Expensive. that is an option. We know somebody in this group Body's has done totally. it a number of times. <laughs> yep. Um, He's got <laughs> cut her face off. But if you, face on. if you suggest trying to help her, she, I mean, we'll talk about that if you bring it up in conversation. I think I'm thinking out loud. Oh, if you were saying that in character, then um, she would reply, no, I'm good. I, I don't need any help. Uh, I appreciate it, though. That's very thoughtful. I thought, I'll be okay. It's more to cover my, my, friend, my friend here. I don't want her getting in trouble with her uh, higher-ups telling I, you that you're still on the street. I think if, if she... you were just exchanged, I don't think you're not in trouble. Oh, no, you're right. There'll probably be some assholes who are wanting to uh, do some ill shit, but I guarantee you it won't be Biotechnica after I talk to your friend. Well, what's on the okay, then. You like to live, I assume. I love it. And it's uh, fucking this great. one would like to have... Just because whatever she's property Glenn, I have ideas, <laughs> me the person. So let's just sort of verbal Is it the contract Valentino? here. <laughs> Is she a Valentino? No. Did oh. she sell it to the Valentinos? No, 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 no. Oh, it's not that easy. Valentinos do like moving drugs, but they're not up in Watson where she was. Right, but she uh, she ran to Glenn. she ran to the Glen. That's right. That's why I made the Valentino connection. Yeah, if you want to check that, you can. Although tangling with the Valentino is probably a problem, but she hasn't said what's happened to the drugs. Right. That's, I don't know. Um, you can try and figure it out, or you can just let her live. Well, it sounds like she doesn't want to. 
No, she, oh, she wants to. She just said she, she just, wants to. She's just not afraid of dying. Right. She, That's she, what she's made she, clear. She's going to die on her terms. She's you, a real trooper. You being, like, her being like this to you the whole time she's dying, or her living, and then you getting the benefit of her living is the current thing on the table. Yeah. You got to die, Kimbo, with your favorite finger. Like she wanted to negotiate that part with. No, her. no, 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 no. So Letty kept on putting out things that she didn't want, which was. I want you to leave Night City. She doesn't want to leave Night City. I've only offered that once. And though. she said, "No, I don't want that." That's and the only I time I said, "No, I don't I want that." Didn't offer it again. Well, when you said that's the second time, which we've come to, we're we're currently at. When you said you get to live, she was like, "Yeah, I'm on board." But we need a full on confirmation of that. She's on board for that. She wants to live. That's that's where we're at. But you have to pull the trigger and say, "Well, not." Not foolish. That's probably not a good term <laughs> for letting her live. Yeah, <laughs> you need to you need to be push the one the who button. cuts the. Oh, no, that's probably not <laughs> push the button. Could be a gun <laughs> in cyberpunk. Cutting no cords, pushing no buttons. You need to be no the cares. one who decides Makes whether or not deal. that's the deal. You can always All just right. lie. Oh no, she's, she's not live. walking until I've got a car full of drugs. <laughs> get get the information you need and then waste her after. Just you know, lie. I like how you think. Um You can walk free if you give the information. Great. Well, um since we're back on um speaking terms, uh hey um fellow uh driving the car, can you go ahead and pull us over to uh El Coyote Coho? And do miss. Thanks, appreciate it. Phone key makes the turn and in the fucking Glen again. Slow down. <laughs> All right, you pull back behind an alleyway at her direction, behind the coho. Um, you see that there are a number of people kind of hanging around, uh, Valentinos, uh, but they don't seem to be like focused on you or anything. Um, a couple of them kind of give you some looks. But uh, as you kind of pull up and then stop, um, she says, Okay, so the information you want, um, pretty sure you're already aware of where I called you from, right? Right around here. Yep. So these older phones, they um, interesting. A lot of the uh, same mechanics um, and functions um, as newer agents, but um, harder to find, harder to kind of detail. Um, if you go ahead and pull the uh, memory bank from that, you'll find my contact list. Should be able to contact some individuals, members of a group known as Maelstrom. They have your drugs, and they're the assholes who did me dirty. Mm, so they stabbed you in the back. Yeah, just like you're going to, probably. But um, main point is, is they're the ones who have your drugs. And um, they're not selling them. They're using them. Seems that when you mix your specific drug with uh, black lace, it um, heightens the duration. All day highs. It's already a 24-hour thing. All day highs. Okay. <laughs> like a steady one. I'll stay out of it. I'm just. <laughs> do, I've do read you, the book. Well, no, do you say that they're, they're, they're already at like a. You, you do it's say already a 24 hour effect. All day highs. Yeah, that's that's right. Very, very cheap. Very, very easy. I'm not talking full doses, kid. Or you're not a kid. He keeps calling you kid, so I keep imagining you as this young pirate boy. <laughs> yes. He's, she says, I'm not talking full doses, my man. I'm talking micro-dosing all day. But full blast. Yeah, that sounds kind of badass. From what I understand, <laughs> a fellow named um, Jimbo, part of the uh, Maelstroms, was their guinea pig for the uh, process. Oh, the job. <laughs> dude was high for a week on a full blast uh, tank. 
it's pretty crazy shit that you've got going there. It kind of moves through the bloodstream and the nervous system and all the places I guess drugs need to go. Real easy. Real fluid-like. Anyway. My information regarding their contact info is uh, located on that, um, that old phone there. You pull the deck and you get somebody competent enough, they'll be able to retrieve the information. And um, pretty sure they're located up in uh, Watson, not too far from where you um, and I first met on that phone call. Can you give us an address? It's an old warehouse. It's, um, she would give it to you, but I don't have it marked on here. I yet. understand. Yeah. Miss Letty, do you want to try to access the phone before we go anywhere? Uh, yes, I would like to get this to Nina as quickly as possible. Did you ever meet Toby? Razor, why don't you walk the girl to the phone? <laughs> before before you kind of finish, she kind of like puts her hand up to Razor and says, Did you ever meet Toby? Miss Letty? Toby. Yeah, Toby. She's referenced him like three times now. I don't, I'm the surprised nobody The exact that. that she was in contact with. Uh, um... The Terminated. A few times. Yeah, you probably didn't know him too well then. You want to know why he sold me what he sold me? Why? Because unlike you, he was still a believer. He thought Biotechnica really was doing good in the world. Selling proteins. Selling drugs that help people with their problems and their maladies. He believed the hype that I'm assuming you're trying to get front page all over the scream sheets his uh his family wasn't doing too well and I am um, not a big fixer but I knew him from grade school yeah that's right I went to a fancy cool school just like you did miss did me a lot of fucking good and uh yeah he reached out to me Asking me if I could sell this stuff to help him help his family off the grid, off focus. So I helped him. And yeah, he was stealing. Corporation always wins, they say. It's fine. But um, even though I told him that was what was going to happen... He told me, no, it'll be okay. I gotta help my mom. Did you know they killed her too? I was uh, not aware of this. Yeah. Look it up. Or don't. Your director or your manager or whatever they call your boss. Probably notice that and start asking questions about that. But yeah. Put that old bitch in a body bag too. Looks over at Razor. What makes you think they won't do the same to yours when they're done with you? Or if you cross them. Let's go get that phone. Miles. <laughs> do you take her out to the phone, Razor? Yeah. All right. She walks out there with you. The Valentinos kind of give you a look. And she kind of does one of these to them. And they kind of back off and just kind of like mind their own business. She walks over to the phone. And uh, she looks over at you and she says... Um, I don't have any tools. The uh, other corpo guy kind of took them from me. You yeah, gotta... There's a tool hand in the back seat. That like bitch. She has a tool hand for specific tools. She has a lighter in her thumb. Oh. She has what a... kind of tools do you need? And she has a welding torch in her two digits here when they're combined. Do you need like a tech bag or just a wrench? Like actual tools. Honestly, just a wrench. I've, I'm capable of providing that if you guys wanted to call okay. me over. So you come out, and it's you, um, Razor, and her. She takes the wrench. Yep. Rain's coming it's down. It's my hand. <laughs> oh, Rain's coming down pretty hard. Um, honestly, if you... If she, I can, I can, yeah, I can dislocate it. I can she can, suck it's on. Yeah, she pops hers off, and she takes your hand and replaces it. So she, now she has, like, a more manly hand and you have a more feminine hand um and she i uh, like my own cigarette 
dope. And she reaches underneath and kind of fiddles around with it, uses the wrench, kind of twisting at something, and then kind of pops a weld um, and then opens up a small plate, reaches inside, and jacks out this large kind of data um, term, like basically a hard drive, um, and then hands that up to uh, Razor. And then okay. hands that over to you, takes hers back. All right. Well, that's our agreement. You're going to go back on it. Now's the time to do it. Um, they won't mess with you. She gestures towards the Valentinos. If you want to go ahead and um, handle your business. But if not, she kind of just flops up her collar, starts to turn around nice and slow, moving down the alleyway. Are you was... safe here, miss? She looks over. Um, I could drop you off someplace else if you'd like. I don't think I'm probably safe back at the uh, apartment, so I'm going to head over to the mega building nearby, and um, I've got a friend who lives there. That's where I'll be staying. I hand her a burner phone. She, There's uh, one number on this. It's mine. Call me if you need something. What was your name? Guinea. It's pretty funny. It's a good handle. I like it okay. Alright. And hey, no hard feelings about the stab. She says to a uh, razor. It's gotcha. a man he no wink at it. it. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled that out of a dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, you know it looked familiar. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm a I'm a fan for the dramatics. She'll turn around and head on down the alleyway if you let her. I wasn't told to backstab her, so. Or told to front stab her. <laughs> yeah. Let her go. Alrighty. But he won't tell you otherwise. I will drop you all off at either Buzzards or the restaurant we met at. Well, yeah, let's go to the restaurant we met at. I can drop off Buzzard on the way home if he'd like. On the way That's there. Hell if yeah. You're going to drive we... us all the way back up to... Don't Francesca. we have to go get the drugs? Well, he has to get his car at Francesca's. Oh, that's right. Francesca's, however it was. Francesca's. Yeah, Francesca's. Damn it. It's spelled with an I. Francesca's. Anyway. Yeah. Whatever it is. The Italian joint. Okay. I'm driving, <laughs> I'm driving at least him back to the Italian joint. I could drop the rest of you off between here and there. <laughs> That's close enough to home for me and the office. Yeah, I'm fine being dropped off here because I can just kind of, you know, catch a train to my apartment building. So are we saying, or uh, I guess, but is this job, are you calling it done? Or do you need uh, this tomorrow? Don't we have to go get drugs? I I was just assuming I mean, we were at the I, end. If we need to go get the drugs, need... yeah, we'll go get the drugs. Yeah, I guess we do need to go get the drugs. Well, I mean, okay. it's already being held by another gang, isn't it? If you head yeah. up that way... Um, do you deliver an, a status update to uh, Nina? Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you and do? You leave anything Claire? out, or do you like mention everything that happened? Um, I mentioned that it did not go the way that I particularly planned, but um, I felt the information trade off was, um worth letting her go um, to reacquire the drugs. And you mentioned the part about the uh, compromisation regarding the Neuralink? Yeah. Uh, her response um, is uh, she's going to be calling you in a second. Agent Bing! Yeah, that's kind of what I expected. Answer. Hey! Really fucked up situation according to Nina. Um... It looks pretty bad on your end, but uh, not terribly so. You've got a location, right? Absolutely. We are headed that way right now. Yeah, Maelstrom activity in that area is pretty heavy. Um, if you and your crew think you can handle it, go for it. But um, if not, uh, Nina already put this um, combat drone squad in an AV ready to go against Compeki Plaza. That's pretty crazy. Hell of an evening. Um, uh... Since we've already wasted the money doing that, we might as well just send them over handle the uh, business that way. 
that would uh, be appreciated. I was yeah. not sure what would be happening at Compeki, but it went. So Harvest, fine. Harvest had the girl, huh? Uh, he did indeed, and. Uh, yeah, that's really that's fucked a... up. From what Nina told me, uh, you handled yourself very well um, against uh, Corpo. Um, that smart and that well known. Um, so kudos, uh, congratulations. Um, I'm not terribly happy with the outcome, but I think it's the best that you could have managed with everything that was thrown at you this evening. Um, it sounds like you um, hired a bunch of guns just to kind of wander around the city, following you around. It is, that was great. Uh, Loved it. <laughs> Um, it is uh, not my best uh, choice, but it is a choice that I need. Again, like I said, the best opportunities um, available to you, um, to be completely honest. Um, great job on that. Great job handling that. I'll expect a full debrief um, sometime tomorrow. Don't worry about it being first thing. Um, and I'll go ahead and send those combat drones over to go and deal with the uh, the medications. Um I will be sending over a document for you to pass along to your team, though, um, and make sure they go ahead and sign those and send those back immediately ASAP, okay? Absolutely, I will get those done. You get an immediate kind of contact uh, note, which is a forward or forwarding document. It's a non-disclosure agreement. Yeah. Um, and uh, you would go ahead and send that over to um, Mortar, Guinea, Razor, and yeah. Buzzard. And you'd also <laughs> you'd also see a text message that says, um, for folks, I went ahead and put an extra thousand for each of them in the pool if you want to make sure it's sweet enough for them to keep their lips sealed. Signed. Director. Yeah, that's essentially what Buzzard's waiting for. Once the Eddie's come through, he'll sign it. Yeah. She'll yeah. send them through. We're getting 3K? So that, nice. Yeah, that's up to 3K now. Well, that pays for my burner and that tip I made. I gave that was not good enough for that asshole. It better pay yeah. for those. Razor will sign it. All in all, seventy dollars. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm assuming uh, Guinea is not dropping everyone off in their individual locations. Just kind of going to a central location and dropping off one person from this position. Since you were kind of heading north before the call kind of got finished and you were kind of on the more southern uh, area in the Glen, you're probably close to the city center, so dropping off Letty at the office would probably be, like, the easiest, and everyone should be able to use the metro or get a cab to go where they need to go. And then you're just a straight shot south back to uh, Pacifica. Um, and if that's the case, the wind-down, after everybody's kind of finished their processing, um, during the uh, cab ride... Um, or while you're back at home in your apartment, as you're kind of getting resituated back in the evening of the uh, 13th of Monday. Um, you see a lot of um, information on the news popping up regarding a very um, uh, horrific uh, conflict up in Watson at an old abandoned all foods warehouse. Uh, looks like Maelstrom doing combat with uh, Biotechnica uh, security forces. Um, and a lot of N54 is kind of focused on um, the, uh, the the content information that's kind of being presented there. Um, it seems that the news reporters are trying to get um, uh, comment from Biotechnica. Um, and the official uh, line is that um, Maelstrom was trying to um, use discarded Biotechnica material. Um, and sell it out on the streets. So it seems that um, your director has used this kerfuffle and politically changed it to be more uh, beneficial to her. Um, as you kind of get your stuff out of the office, as you get your stuff out of the office, Letty, kind of head past Nina. She's still kind of uh, seated there um, at her desk. She kind of gives you like a, you know, Casual like goodbye as you head down to or head up to the AV to take the ride to um, 
your apartment or your condo um, buzzer you kind of get situated on your couch checking out the news mortar uh, good did guinea drop me off personally or did he just like no he oh. dropped he would he wouldn't have dropped anybody off personally i don't think right no, i was gonna i i, I offered yeah. to buzzard because he lives oh. nearby here i was gonna say it's friday night right i was gonna invite guinea to it's not friday it's monday go oh i thought it was friday i was just gonna invite him just to come hang out you know we're starting to, seem, we're starting to become friends yeah, I'm seeing him more often. We're come out on a Monday night. Do you yeah, four right. do, do you four want to hang out? Like, no. Mortar, okay. mortar, mortar <laughs> is his bedtime. clearly not interested. And <laughs> Razor, this fixer hooked me up with two five star meals and then paid me three thousand eddies. Yes, yeah, so if she's down, wants to hang out, I will form a friendship with her. <laughs> well, like what? Again, it's up to Letty whether or not she's in the mood to go hanging out. Um, I don't know. If uh, you know that's up to her, but I was going to say for Razor, you're not too far away from your mom's place uh, here in the Glen. So if you wanted to just take a quick cab ride over there, just to stop <clears> in and say hi to her, yeah, that's probably what Razor would do. Uh, that might be what you were thinking. Boy or mama. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, three um, K richer off the backs of um, uh, Biotechnica once again using the corporation as best you can, but it definitely does seem that that non-disclosure agreement um, specifically refers to all of the events of the evening, including everything. And it's probably not a great idea to go talking about this story while you're drinking and carousing with others. Yeah. All right. Perfect session. Um, but there were a couple of points where uh, combat was on the table and <laughs> you could have chose that but i'm surprised that you didn't i was ready I, 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 I was i was also ready um to have a lot of fun fighting you at three points in this day, I, I, evening and it just didn't happen murdering letty this was the best job <laughs> three points ever had <laughs> so the apartment building the the plaza and then the 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 car ride or yeah coyote place apartment for you guys here, the apartment was a combat scenario. Compeki Plaza was a very unlikely but possible combat scenario, and uh, her fighting her. Yeah, it That's almost cool. it almost went off too. One of us fought her almost. Yeah, well, wow. <laughs> sort of. It, he, she insulted his mom. Well, the she thing insulted everyone's mom. It was a generalization, and she was angry. <laughs> the the thing is, is if he hadn't um, followed through. What I mean, to, I'll cover it in the aftermath. Thanks for watching those oh. that did. <laughs> we will pick up uh, tomorrow evening with more fun times in Dark Skies. See you there. Good game.